I've been down a podcast. Hello before. and welcome to DCP Live, episode number 157, the one where Pope will not shut up so we can't start the <laughs> podcast. But here we are. We are finally live, guys. It is going to be an exciting episode because there is a ton of stuff to talk about in Destiny. Huge mm-hmm. shout to keep things. Also, Datto's on the podcast. But before we jump into Datto being on the podcast, I want to say shout out to Scuff and our uh, being an awesome sponsor for the spot ca- for the podcast. The Spodcast. The Spodcast. The Spodcast, exactly. Yeah. This is their brand new one. Of, they have four new designs for Halloween. This is one of them. It's a juicy and design right there. It's very colorful. There's, yeah, I, I like mean, that. Well, yeah, it's juicy. There's eyeballs. There's a hand. Yes. If you're an audio Skulls. listener, Watts is holding up a very awesome looking it's, controller. It's almost got like an Ed Hardy look to it. It's cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool, yeah. yeah. Check I in the description it. below. You'll find a, a link colorful. to Scuff's website. And remember to use code DCP to get a discount. Bam. Check out mm-hmm. That's DCP. the plug right there. The plug and a half. It is. Yeah. They're good people. You know, they helped us. Uh, they gave us a spot to land at at PAX. Had a great couch yep. set up. Really great opportunity for us to work there. And, and, and They had an awesome booth, too. They were, like, doing the controllers, yeah, awesome. building them. Their booth was yeah. great, yeah. Yeah, they had, like, the contest, right, where you could... Yeah, like race against other people to yeah, build a to controller. Faster. Actually, build the controller right next to somebody it was really cool. Yeah, I gotta tell you too. It turns out couches are clutch at PAX. Oh, they are. Chairs are great. <laughs> Scuff had couches, and carpet. didn't they? And 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 oh, and uh, padded, padded carpet. Carpets. You know what they actually had at the booth that I've, I've been meaning to go to the Scuff website to pick up is they had these like inflatable pillows that go on your lap, and then you put your arms on it, like so you're holding your controller. And your arms rest on the inflatable pillow on your lap, so it like elevates your hands up just a little bit. It was actually ingenious. Like, nice. It was cool. Yeah, that's great. So, Briar, do you remember? So, there's a belly pillow that women, pregnant women, or women that just had a newborns, that can put around their waist. It's a donut shaped thing that they make for for women that, and it you can put the newborn right on it. And when my when my uh, daughter was just born, that's how I played Much of Destiny with her sleeping on me on that pillow with my hands resting on it. So oh, it's nice. a, it's a, it's dads out there know that. There you go. Oh, know dads know. Dads know. Dads know. Speaking yeah. of dads. dads know. Speaking of dads. dads know. Well, you Dad-o. you, you, you know. <laughs> Dad, <laughs> yes. Dad toes know. Goodbye. Well done. Uh, Creamy that transition there. Jeffy. How about that? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Dad is officially gone. He's totally out. Yeah, he, he his, said his door is closed. Everybody. He said it was great. Enjoyed the podcast, but he's out. Yeah, the Dado joke no, was just too much. <laughs> he's had a rough week. You know, it's a long week. So long week. Yeah, long yeah. Week. Are, yeah. Are you? It's been, it's been a long week. I don't know about rough, but it's been long. There's are are so, you uh, so close? You can get to world yeah. first before you crack. Right. It's true. It's true. Mm-hmm. Are you a puppy? I'm fourteen. Daddy? You're not close. <laughs> are you? Am I what? Are you a puppy daddy yet, Dado? No. No puppy. No. Why? Why not? Because I have way too many other things going on to be thinking about anything like that right now. But think of the no, richness in your life that's fair. of having a, hmm. a, I, look, a dog. I get this from Danielle every day. I don't Good need woman. it here. Good woman. As the, the key with this whole transaction, Dado, is to bitch as much as possible and to finally let in. But make terms like uh, you're in charge of walking the dog. You're in charge of feeding the dog because I don't oh, even want a yes. dog. Yeah, you got to have terms. We've had, <laughs> the, so. we've had the discussions. This is an experienced man talking right now. <laughs> we, we've is, had discussions. Is, yeah, this is experience. Listen, I have lost this battle many times. <laughs> As a pet owner and over owner of a nice doggo, Joey, he enriches yeah. the life greatly. Just want to say. I can, I can concur. I have a beagle mm-hmm. that I – he is – Every time I get home from work, you know, the rest of the family is what spread out throughout the house. He is the first one person at the door, mm-hmm. person dog at the door, and he's this just person. Person. This person. Come on. Yeah, he, he's here's a person. The, here's the thing that I keep telling Danielle, and she is like, How could you not like one of the I didn't have like any good pet experiences growing up, right? So like I had a cat that we got in like seventh mm-hmm. grade. To the day this thing died, it never liked anything. Or anyone in the house, it would not come up to you and like come near you. The, after I got done with college, anytime I would come home, I was a stranger in the house. It was a lot of whacking at my feet, a lot of Jeez. scratching me. The first, oh, Jesus. This, the first experience I had with this cat in the first week was that it scratched my Sonic Adventure uh, oh, uh, Dreamcast no. game, and I had to oh, go buy another no. one. That was the game. start. That's Sonic Adventure. That was the start 
of this relationship with the pet. So it wasn't I going anywhere never really it. had. I understand if you had a bad growing cat. up. All right. Yeah, I understand. I never had that growing up experience with a good pet or a dog or even like my friends. Like I, my friends barely had pets. Like one of them had a cat. All, all and it one takes, of them had a dog all it takes is one awesome pet to change your mind. And you'll be like, damn, yes. this is like a buddy. You know, it's not. Yeah, but a bad. A bad one does the same. <laughs> That's true. A bad Plus, pet. I have like a billion pets and never had a bad one. <laughs> I I have a I bad a one now. I have a corgi. I think that it's barks at me every time pet. I walk into a room with my kids or my wife. Just tell it. them comms clear. You'll be good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Comms clear. Yeah. Yeah. Comms clear. Like, corgi. I, I, I travel a ton and having to maintain a pet when you're traveling. At, oh, yeah. on, I, on average, over the past two years, I've traveled once a month. Yeah, on a plane. Uh, I feel you at the very for sure. I, I, yeah. I completely so understand. So it's that. just a lot of time away yeah. from the house and this and that. Danielle's so. got to have a uh, you know warm and fuzzy body to hang out with when you're gone. I mean, there she comes go. with me. I, br- I, I drag her with well, me. Well, if not you have a dog, dog, that's everything. not going to happen anymore. Yeah. Nope. Uh, it changes She'd the travel. She'd have to stay right? home with now, the cat. Puppy. You can just leave a cat behind. Fuck it. No, yeah. you cannot. You put a bowl of water, Cats a bowl of food. Like roommates. Of, Dogs are more like A bunch of sand in the corner, and you're good. Oh, no, that is not true. Both my cats are way more needy than any dogs I've ever had. <laughs> if I don't give them their allotted morning cuddle time, they will not leave me alone. They're not having so, it. Right now is Not when somebody's going to insert in the chat um, in the chat below the YouTube actual Destiny content starts. Yeah, here. Destiny yeah. talk starts. At- <laughs> well, hey, before <laughs> we get into Destiny content, Data, when uh, uh, when was the last time you were on actually? You remember? Uh, yeah. It was probably beginning before of the round, round, right? I feel like yeah. I'm on like once once a season. Basically, yeah, was it? The start of the- it was June. It was season yeah. opulence, yeah, so right? June. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so usually right on right before or right after a raid. So, you know, yeah. I just I like to catch up real quick, you know, five minutes of catch up. How how was uh, how's things been since, uh, you know, the, the summer and packs and all that? It's been really busy basically since Guardian Con yeah. uh, ended. Yeah, just very, very busy. A lot of things going on with the house. A lot of things just trying to keep up on YouTube and Twitch and then anything else I got to do packs and then travel like i got another four three or four trips before the end of the year so it's a lot of planning and this and that um so just so yeah that's just, that's just the life busy. and we that's the can life we of talk YouTuber about streamer, your, right? your cosplay at pax because that tiny tina tiny tina Shh. Jesus, Briar. <laughs> do you even play Borderlands, Briar? Unbelievable, no, man. I don't. Yeah, what do you, you want to talk like, about? Fuck, it. This is stupid. Um, <laughs> oh, dude. Let me just, let me just put out there that, you know what? Those boobs felt real. Pope, I mean, did you, you squeeze feel? I, I copped a feel. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I copped a feel. Look, look. Obviously. I let for science. Because how many times are you offered to touch boobs? To squeeze a man's boobs? Not boots? very often. Not as, how often, not as often as I'd so like, often. I'll tell you that. Not yes. very often, right? <laughs> so I'm trying to give people the opportunity. You're just spreading joy. That they might <laughs> fantasize about, like, man. Right. Spread, you are, spread spread touch your boobs. are allowing so every like, I'm letting you do it. There to have their moment, yeah. Right, right. so <laughs> mm-hmm. I try to help. Try help. You're no, just helping that's, out, that's man. Fun that's to do, the, but the helper. Optimal boob it was, squeeze. It was by far the most amount of work <laughs> out of any of the ones that I've done so far. Danielle did like basically all the makeup on the day of PAX, and then when I did it for um, Borderlands Three launch, that was I did like probably about eighty percent of it. So it was outstanding. Nice. Yeah, it's an like impressive you, I cross. I couldn't really, really recognize you. Yep. To be honest, I like, had a double take. Yeah. You were unrecognizable as Dado. You were. Yeah. I mean, like, I, mean, I had some people come really up good. to me, like, immediately knowing that it was me because I said that I was going to do it, which is fine. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, a lot of people were like, "Oh, I'm not going to lie. I recognize your kneecaps. Mm. My kneecaps. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw those from a mile away. Kneecaps gave yeah. it away. Yeah. I a lot, you get a good look at his prosthetic. knees. A lot. I think only oh, one of well, them his, was showing. His, yeah. yeah. And all I needed. was I recognize one. the curve of your right. cheek. You know, the behind. Mm-hmm. I have, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh-huh. my Which mom was Jewish and my dad cleavage? was a stop sign. So yeah. I have a very distinct chin. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, the ass cheek. He was talking about that the cheek. Only unfortunate. No, he wasn't. He wasn't talking <laughs> about, about that cheek. I was, talking, <laughs> I was talking about your left ass cheek, obviously. Yeah. The butt cleavage. Yeah. Clearly. Yeah. In that case, I. Uh, the under no butt. comment. So I appreciate the, the, I appreciate the group photo we got with you. You had a. Yeah, you have a future in cosplay. Is that something you're going to do um, 
more? Is that something you enjoy doing? You've we've seen two I, characters now where you've gone full Datto. Full Datto. Full Datto? I, yeah. I'm unclear on what that means. Same. But, well, so what was the first one that it was? Tom's a, clear. Can we get an explanation, please? Is, <laughs> was the, the first one I did was Datto? 2B from Near Automata. Yes, thank you. So when you go when you go all in on on something, I'm yeah. calling it. I call that full Datto. Okay. okay. I don't know. You guys don't optimal. say that. Hmm. You're the first person who's ever said that. Well, in my world, I say full data. I'm going now. full data okay. right now. Pope is trailblazing right so, now. He's starting to say full data for a cosplay experience. You know, and I, I think it's yeah. going to catch on. When yeah, you go so. all out and and it, and it's just amazing. You've gone full data. Yeah. So all right. fair enough. What are you going for? Another one? Are you are you targeting another character? Um, Can you let us in on any? Well, uh, fifty grand for Guardian Con. This most recent one was Marasov next year Ooh, okay. PAX, PAX West 20, uh, 2020 nice. um, I just need a while to even start something like that now, are we going to get an Aldrin um, Giggs mm -hmm. uh, I asked him if he wanted okay. to do it and I, I, I think we it, it is a, somewhat official that he is going to be doing it I think we tried to lower it down on his Guardian Con thing to like 40k and we got to 43 on his or something like that okay. so I, I I'll be talking to him to make sure that he's he's on the ball with it as much as possible. So How it's long does it take to build a, a, a like a costume like that? Like how many Great man question. hours is it? Don't Great know. question. <laughs> I have I have not Ten made in chat. I have not made any of the costumes that I have worn for the three cosplays that I've done because I don't know anything about sewing and I have uh, not a lot of time to learn those things. So I'd rather just pay someone who I know is going to do a really, really, really good job with it as opposed to me trying to labor away that tons sounds, and tons of hours for like a really This is somebody really good that's job is to do this. That's a really this good how skill I feel about delegate. snow shoveling. So, okay. so Dado, this, this is somebody's job. That, that, uh, to, to well, make... I've gone to different people for different costumes. And, but, um, yeah, it's like, I'm just like, hey, here's my measurements. Make this, and here's money. Please make, and they're like, okay, that's smart. And that's uh, the job on Maxi. I, so I would like to learn how to make my own stuff at some point, but I mean, you ain't got the time. It's it's a time. It's so a do you have a, a skill? Yeah. I'm I'm noticing a trend here. You have an affinity to dressing up as women. Yeah, like you've last three. Have you? Um, is that something that, like, do you? plan on a, a guy character or how does how does it come about is it just is he, are these fans that are picking your characters or are these things that you have thought no, of I, of time? i've done it so so it started when um for for the league of legends fans out there um there's a guy named sneaky who uh plays on a professional team he plays on cloud nine and he started doing uh girl cosplays like i don't know two years so i don't know for a while ago and uh I saw that and I was like, that looks fun. I want to try that. And then I did. And here we are. <laughs> with a boob squeezing That's, that's the entire thing. <laughs> and I, was, I, I have done male characters in the past. Um, the first one I did was for, uh, this guy right here for, oh. for Final Fantasy X. Uh, dyed my hair blonde and everything. Made the sword. Uh, don't make things out of wood. Mm, heavy. Because they're really heavy. Yeah, yeah. Do not. That was that was my first learning experience. Was the sword mm -hmm. looked very good? It was incredibly heavy. So right. don't make things out of wood. Um, and then I did like Ash Ketchum, like you know, a couple of years later. But that one's like an easy one. I had my grandma just like sew together some some scrubs in a collared shirt, and I was like, "Can you just make this?" And she's like, "Sure." And then is that who it. you're paying to make these costumes? Is your grandma? No, no. <laughs> it's, it's grandma. Sweatshop is basically everybody's grandmother. <laughs> no. um, but I just find it more interesting. And I, I personally, I find it hilarious when people find out that I'm a dude because I love that reaction of either just like people finding it hilarious or people just being really weirded out. Like That's some great. people get super, yeah. super uncomfortable. And that makes me really laugh. A lot. So Privately as a away as a them. former cyclist who had to shave their legs fairly often when I was mm -hmm. racing bikes for aerodynamics. That's your excuse uh, for aerodynamics. That was, excuse. <laughs> that was my <laughs> excuse. Uh, do you have any <laughs> tips out there for men that need to shave all uh, do, do that heavy uh, Man yeah. manscaping? Uh, 
Manscaping. I just I just use Nair. I just okay. use Nair. Um, right. Smells awful, but uh, it, it gets the job done. Mm. No burning you know, skin just kinda, anymore. Pro tip. Stuff. It, it, it does burn like a little yeah, bit. Like it, it doesn't burn. Yeah, it's just like a very light stinging. I've been thinking and about getting it rid of the to beard. Get you that think uh, you're going to nair that off? <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, dude, that would be funny. I have, a, I have like a razor that's designed to go like omega smooth on your face. Oh, omega uh, smooth. As close and, as it uh, gets, huh? So I, I think I, you should I, try and letting your wife wax you again, Briar. Wax yeah. You? That's that the that thing you've ever said to me. That was good. I don't need money for that. That should be a donation. I did pay money for that. That's great. Well, I would love to discuss the finer. I'd love to discuss the finer dynamics of a cosplay further, but we've got a lot to talk about with Shadow Keep. Okay, Destiny we talk have, starts yeah, now. Like this new game that came out. Right? We've got so much to talk about from the leveling in Shadow Keep to the new raid to the new exotic to uh, Vex Offensive, the, the changes puzzle. and the patrol. Just where should we start? The tower. The tower, right? PvP uh, changes. Um, you want to start with the tower? I guess that's our home base. Sure. Tower's changing. Um, right? Ikora. Tower's changing. Yeah, I think they're putting a Starbucks in, right? They're going to Taco Bell and a I Starbucks. It a it's a combo yeah. where nice. you get, you know, America's greatest Mexican food and the best mm -hmm. coffee ever all in one shop mm -hmm. right there. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, yeah. I like it. Wouldn't stop shopping for all your shitting needs. <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah. If, if, uh... Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> a so nice way of putting it. it. Looked, yeah. If you go behind Decora, just with reset this week, so it wasn't there the first week. Uh, there's some construction happening, some scaffolding, some yeah, some welding. That's about the most of it so far. Yeah, they have like NPCs doing the welding. Yeah, also, they say really wow. suspicious stuff when you're near them. Oh, like really? What? Do they something about oh, yeah. that? They're, they're, they're like, they're like, oh, they're here. Be quiet. Be cool. And I'm like, no, they don't. Weird. And then there was one that they said, uh, they? someone was they... like, why don't we have a speaker yet? And I was like, huh. That's a damn good question. And are you saying that Icor is building a new speaker tower? Maybe she will become the new speaker. She's going to be the speaker. She's going to get uh, a mask. She, I kind of assume, right? Like she's she's the most qualified for that mm -hmm. to be the speaker. But she reads you some long dialogue. Did the, Eris the is going to be the speaker. That's who's going to be the speaker. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eris mm. is going to sit on her creepy throne. I mean, she's got powers, right? Eris is powerful. She's a little crazy. And crazy. Yeah. <laughs> she can summon you out of thin air or whatever. I guess, or... After the campaign, I'm concerned about her mental health. Definitely. Imagine her, the you know the campaign running for that in the in the tower. Come to me. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. And then she has an argument at with 3 p.m. for a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Pacific time. Like Vote line A one. <laughs> so. So Accord is saying, I'm not a lore guy. I don't, Dad, I don't know if you are, uh, but she is yeah. saying something. She said something about the Vex stability or Well, they're building a gate, right? right? They're building a Vex yeah, gate. Yeah, they're building a gate. She wants to build a portal in the tower? Question mark? Yeah, that's that a, seems like a terrible idea. She wants to build a right? Vex yeah. gate in the tower? I believe <laughs> that's like what it's Maybe they're too. just building it there and then they'll move it later. Over well, we already know that's platform. not going to go well. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to build it. Yeah, right? They're going to put the final piece in, and then it's going to be like, oh. Enter how we here. lose all our shit in yeah. Destiny 3. <laughs> they kill the tower again. <laughs> and now we're moving to the farm for real this time. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> She's going to invite I, the Vex right into the tower. Yeah, they're just going to zoom in with the that eye and give us the, you know, the Hydra is mm -hmm. going to be all. You know? the, the final week of the Vex offensive is going to be us fighting them in the tower. I'd be right. up for that. Actually. They That'd all cool. just start That'd popping totally into the down. tower. That'd you never amazing. know. That that might be a good segue into that. Like, so I don't know if we're there yet, but they had talked about wanting to do right the end of the season live events. They've talked about an overall story arc. Yep. Uh, yeah. Is this maybe the first piece of of maybe moving yeah. towards live I, events or just I, what do we expect? Oh, we I'm see? assuming like the world is changing. I mean, we saw this with Vex Offensive, which we'll get into with the patrol. Like they the Vex are actually invading in the moon, and it's the the garden is like teleporting them into that area and the like the the world is changing with this stuff now they did do this with dreaming city back when uh last wish was completed yeah. and then it started the cycle mm -hmm. and all that um so I, I i hope that you're right fran that they are actually going to continue this over a whole season and well, maybe even seasons it, it sounds like that's what they wanted to do right and we're even seeing that the store type of forsaken storytelling with learning about eris's fire team because this week we got to learn about the Titan that was in her fire team. There was like a little yeah. quest to find out oh, about really? him and how he died. And that, like and axe right on the Spoon. axe comes down. Uh, yeah, Whoa. it was. It's actually really cool. Spoilers, Pope. I haven't played that yet. 
Uh, we're gonna have I to. Are we gonna have either. to do all six of her fire team or all the five dead ones anyway? Probably. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would I really like, so. I'd like to I, learn I, more about. I love them. the lore that we're going through and looking at those ghosts, finding those ghosts on the moon. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is so many little details of this um, of this DLC that I'm enjoying so much. And one of those details is reading the lore of uh, reading those ghosts as we're finding them and going back. We haven't had ghosts to look for. Yeah, and, it was uh, one of the true. things that was missing from Destiny One, one right? It's, that was yeah. kind of one of those fun activities in Destiny One that you did when, you know, maybe you kind of ran out of like the the DLC's activity. So let me go looking for ghosts. You know, you can bring up what was it, DestinyGhostFinder.com, and just start go looking for them. And it's kind of fun thing like, to do. I feel yeah. like they they're more meaningful now because they're they mm -hmm. represent actual guardians mm -hmm. that um, yeah. you know. Well, we have a connection to it also about like the stuff that happened in the past that we're finding out now. I really like it how they're doing this. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So to get get back to the tower question though, real fast, uh, do you guys think they the example they used in the past? And I don't think it's going to be one to one, but Luke or uh, whoever had shared in the Vidoc, I think it was, or maybe it was in the state of the game stuff. But it was like, oh, what if you know somebody just showed up at the end of this season and then whatever Ada leaves, but then the new vendors there, oh, like right. that was sort of. Thing. Do we think? This could be the pace. And just, I might as well say, it. that's what I think. I think this is going to be building for a while. And although the lore seems to be some portal thing, maybe also it might become some new place at the end of this season. And then so we think, really see it. You think that's going to be done at the end of this, uh, the season of um, Undying? I, I figured it the, out. Go for? Or you? I figured isn't it out. I want to go for? Lots has oh, got lots. it. Season of Dawn is next, right? That sounds mm -hmm. warlocky. Who's a warlock? Osiris is a warlock. Also, Sunshine, Osiris, Lighthouse. Ikor is building this portal thing. It's going to be a portal, and Osiris is going to walk through it. Mercury is a giant forest. Vex portal thingy, right? Boom. Vex machine. That makes and sense. Osiris is like, hello, I'm back. So Osiris is going to. I mean, they are. Talking. He is related to the Vex and stuff. He well, is. He's, he and, is. And he's and he's going <laughs> to lead us on an adventure in that season to find. You know, Saint Fourteen actually isn't dead, and he's going to help us no, save him. No, he's no, not. Brother Vance <laughs> is lost. He's been captured by the Vex, and oh, nobody gives a shit. We're not going to actually know what happened. Was Brother Vance <laughs> got bitch slapped, and then yeah. has been sobbing ever since, and we're going to ignore him. You know, so we sorry, have to Brother collect Vance. his tears. Fantastic. <laughs> tears of Brother I, Vance. I, re I really think we're going to go to another timeline where we find where we find that Saint Fourteen's alive. We're going to get him. Osiris is going to find out a way of bringing him back. Hmm. That'd be weird. I, I, when I, I show him the perfect would, paradox, he's going to be like, that's my shotgun. I'm going to be like, dude, have it back. All right, this is crazy. Can we talk about the raid a little bit? <laughs> well, hold up. Before we go to the raid, um, so like, Flyers, like not the, interested at all. The, the tower changing and shifting, the seasons sh shifting with Vex Offensive, I think is fantastic. And if you haven't played yes. Vex Offensive on the moon yet, it is incredibly well done. It is fun. So, well, except for when you initially... Like our introduce to the quest. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. They're like, yeah. there's talk quest. about that. Yeah, yeah. There's a quest, and you're like, is a what? How it do doesn't we... describe what you have to do at all. You have to basically either watch a video by Dado or intuit it, <laughs> like somehow that. Oh, okay. What do I have to do here? Yeah, I, for yeah, actually, Dado, which, did you... which quest is this? So to start, to Vex unlock, offensive. Uh, Vex unlock Vex offensive. offensive. Oh, Vex offensive. Okay. How yeah. did you do you remember how you figured out how to take that first step to get into uh, Vex Offensive? Because they say, uh, oh, there's these invasions on the moon. Go to the moon. You're like, OK. Yeah. Uh, well, didn't Ikora like give you a thing? Yes, and she then, does. Yeah. And then yep. you went that to Eris. The quest. Yep. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah. And then, and then, then Eris told what? what to do. No, she doesn't tell you what to do. It says no, a no. thing, though. It says to go I don't kill. Know. I don't remember. It says to go kill Vex and kill Gate Lords from uh, the invasions, I believe, on the thing. Uh -huh. On the moon. That's, yeah. I mean, that's it doesn't tell it you verbatim, but I mean, no, it's, I didn't have a problem with it. Yeah, it, it's, it's not poorly obvious implemented. in that, like, you're not, it doesn't pop up and say, here's your next thing that you got to do for this. But if you read the actual quest, it's, they, they give you clues. They give yeah. you clues, but you can fly around in the moon, like, looking for Vex and not find any. Yeah, it, in other words, what you're – so here's the deal. I think they wanted it to be a bit of a surprise the way that it happened. So, right, it, it looks like – I think 
You either wait around after a public event's done and nearby on the map. This is what makes it worse, by the way. So on the map, it shows these Vex invasion spots. And you're like, oh, I'll just go there. That's what I thought. I was like, right. oh, I'll yeah. just go to it. And then you're like, wait, that's not even like on, on the map. map. And then you're like, what yeah. am I doing? And apparently you have to wait till after a public event, right? Yeah. And like, yeah. No, it's it's, 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 a, it's shortly like afterwards. 30 to 60 seconds afterwards. Right. Yeah, I was in the raid when all that was going down. And as soon as we finished... I was just like, all right, what do we have? What's what's up? What's going on? They're like, and my chat basically just told me what I had told to do. What to do. So I, I didn't have that yeah, okay. discovery. Yeah. I did it the next morning and I was by myself and I was just like, all right, let me check out this Vex offensive thing. And I, you know, I went to Ikora, then I went to uh, uh, Eris Born and I there was like, okay, there. what do I got to do here? So I took a lap around the moon and I didn't see any. I, I did see one Minotaur just kind of like randomly hanging out. Uh, so I killed him, but then I like I didn't see it's, anything else. So I, I obviously I just Googled it, and Paul Tassie told me exactly what I had to do. <laughs> I, I, I do think there must have been some people who were just floating around, and that event appeared, which must have been really cool. Yeah, I it is a that, cool event once you yeah, figure out where to go. It's lightning it's, is. Yeah. It's, it little, looks beautiful. Like if you does. look up through the portal, you can actually see the Black Garden in there, which is such a nice touch. It's really cool. It's beautiful. Oh, you can. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah if you yeah, look you directly up, up into it. the portal. Yeah, yeah it's they're so coming from the, the Black Garden portal. essentially, which is. Yeah, they're like you came in the Black enough. Garden. Yeah, I was happy to see they happen frequently enough that like, and once you figure out that they're timed right after public events, because I do remember doing quests in Destiny One where you had to go and wait for like a specific public event at a specific location. And I remember like waiting for four hours at one point for one on Mars. And mm -hmm. I was like, Oh, are we in that situation again? But once you figure out that there's actually a, like a way to find these things reliably, Rotation, it's not too yeah. bad, but I was real scared of that. Yeah, I, I agree. They don't, a, they don't explain that very well, but that's part of, I guess that's part of like the mystery sometimes of finding these things in the public spaces. You know, like if you see Vex on the moon, that's clearly different. There hasn't been Vex there. Mm -hmm. It's only been Hive and Fallen. And then suddenly Vex are walking around like, what? Oh, then all of a sudden you see this giant portal in the sky. Like, you can technically run into that. There was, a, there was a little bit of... Uh, I did a lap around the moon and didn't see any Vex, so mm. I was kind of yeah. confused. Mm. Um, I'm also finding that not a lot of people know how to make these events heroic and what does it mean to kill the, mm. the Vex Gate Lords and how to progress that. There's a lot of people that are melting the the Minotaur bosses as there's more and more people together, and they're not killing the the Gate Lords, Hydra, Hydras, or the Hydras, Hydras yeah. first. And so um, there's is, that situation I think where you're, there's where confusion you're, actually about whether or not that even triggers it, like the last one. See, I don't know. Yeah, Dad, I don't know. do you know? I, I just uh, assumed that it was. I haven't done a lot. Okay. Uh, the in fact, the last two times basically I tried to go do it, I was basically doing it by myself, so I could barely even get it done by myself. Yeah. So there's so there's three levels to it, and there's a fourth where a big gigantic yeah, big hydra right. shows up, mm -hmm. and yeah. to get to it and to make it heroic is a uh, is a whole nother challenge. And you've got people are saying, and I'm not, I guess I'm not 100 percent certain on this either, but I've read from Chevy and a few other people saying that you need to kill those. Um, you got to kill six hydra before you kill the gate lord. I could have swore and, and they it, said afterwards that that was actually incorrect, and it's it seems to be 100% I read, RNG. I, I read that too, Tef, but I've had okay. so many people coming in saying that was not When is correct. any public so Maybe there was a bug. Thing. Could have been. Yeah. Could have been a bug, too. Well, in yeah. other words, is, I've heard... Is the, the Vex invasion technically labeled as a public event? Hmm. Like, the public event display banner doesn't come up, does no, it? No, it doesn't. Yeah. So, no. is... Yeah. That's, that's part of me where I'm just like, is there a thing that says heroic or like entered heroic space or whatever? Yeah, so I haven't even heard I, about I that being heroic. Enough to like give you more information. Wouldn't right. it be funny if it's not RNG and everybody's saying it's RNG, just like there's people that are demanding that 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 uh, taken public event is is RNG. <laughs> Uh, Anyhow, <laughs> it's, I mean, yeah, it's funny. Chat just well. saying it was our and like so. I've I've seen I both know. things, and I haven't tested it for myself. So, once you like... once you do do the quest, though, you finally do unlock the Vex Offensive, mm -hmm. which is a six mana activity. It's a public, you know, it's a it's like it's got matchmaking, so you can you can get in there either alone or with a fire team of six, and it's pretty fun for a six mana activity. I don't think it's quite as good as uh, what was the one on Mars called. Imagine. Escalation protocol. Escalation protocol. It doesn't. It's not quite as fun as that, but it's pretty cool. I feel it's, like this yeah. is more like menagerie, right? 
it's mm -hmm. diet menagerie. Yeah. Diet like menagerie. it's the <laughs> loose, like I, I don't even I don't even think it's fair to call it that because the only thing extra that you really have to do is shoot uh, cannons at crystals, and that's yeah. like the only yeah thing. So otherwise, you're just killing tons of ads. Don't be wrong, killing tons of ads pretty fun sometimes. I came up with a build to get my storm caller melee or a super in like 45 seconds or whatever, but like it's just a lot of killing which is fine mm -hmm. but it's definitely not going to treat anyone who is hoping for a more menagerie like experience too much it's right. fun and it's super rewarding too like going in there like you get you get a lot of loot coming out mm -hmm. yeah i feel like it's more rewarding than menagerie honestly because you get a you get something every step of the way yeah, you so do. Every, yeah. Everything that you do. Plus, you have mm -hmm. the bounties that you can complete to get a mm -hmm. specific weapon from the thing. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of loot from there. Yeah, I was disappointed. Uh, that's gonna change it all. I was disappointed that the boss didn't change this week. I was hoping that there was gonna yeah, be different I was bosses. A little, uh, yeah, I was, yeah. Seems like it's just like a hey, here's just go shoot a bunch of stuff and relax and kind of have a good time. Yeah. More so than yeah. Menagerie, which was like, oh, there's different mechanics each step of the way. Mm -hmm. I do mm -hmm. like that there's another six man activity, though. Like, it, it, it's yeah. fun when you have a six man group, like if you're raiding or if you're playing Crucible, to have just another six man activity that you can just stay as a group as is fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Do we, do we know that it's not going to change, though, since it was only out a few days before reset? Maybe. Is there a chance? So. It I don't reset think we know week? for sure. It might change. Yeah. So yeah. It changes every Saturday instead of on reset day. Yeah, maybe once. Or Saturday at the very Shazam. least, are they going to do perks that shift, you know? Mm hmm. Mm. Was it on the map? So, like a knife map from modifiers. Was it on the map mm -hmm. that, modifiers. like, Vex Offensive was going to get, like, a heroic mode or something like that? There's something called, like, yes. was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, there is. That's I like, don't know. It's it's in November. It's, like, frontline. Okay, yeah. Uh, something. Like, I don't this know. This is when they take over the tower. Hold the line. Yeah. <laughs> you go. Frontier. To I don't the know. Tower. Someone in chat, help me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, final, final assault. Final assault. assault. Okay. Final assault. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Final assault. Yeah. So, from my yeah. perspective in playing it, I think it's amazingly tied into the whole experience that, like, the Vex are invading. You have the invasions of the moon that are connected to the Garden of Salvation, and then, or I mean, the, the the Black Garden with the raid, and then also the Vex offensive. Which, yeah, I mean, it's going to get like tedious if you're only doing that. Um, but each character requires requires about four playthroughs to get your power drop, and you have some options for weapons. I do. Find I'm incredibly happy right now because I feel like there's multiple storylines happening. Mm -hmm. There's multiple activities to kind of go into those, and they're all really interesting. Like, and I feel like I haven't had that in a year since Forsaken. Like, mm -hmm. I, I feel like I've been given. The only reason I've had to play Destiny is because well, there's loot, so go get the new loot. And now mm -hmm. there's like there's actually cool stuff to see and do. Well, there's build chasing. I Build tracing has been. I'm really uh, the loot is still there. I'm really happy with what they're doing with the season pass or the the the, the timeline of the season ranks. Get when you're gonna get yeah season ranks when you're gonna get specific loot. Uh, for me, it's you know I know that if I do the daily bounties, I'm gonna see progression, and every time I play, I can get one seasonal rank basically in the time that I have to play a night. Um, yeah. I can get one seasonal rank, and I'm I'm really happy with that. I I know I can see that how long it's going to take me to complete things. I most likely won't hit 100. Like some people have already done that, um, but it's okay with me. I I see the the rank ups, and I know what I can do to go and enjoy it. And I and it gives me an opportunity to play any activity, to get those rank ups. Mm -hmm. They time those rank ups pretty well. Like as far it, as it does not feel like a slog to level it. No, yeah. no. no. Yep. And it's consistent. They didn't like increase how much experience you need. Like you don't need more experience to get from thirty nine to forty than you did from two to three. Right. And I like yeah. that because it just kind of mm -hmm. is a constant flow of these seasonal rank ups. And it's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not the, like the artifact fight. and the power boost all have like the increasing, which is totally fine. It's great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like the season ranks always being a hundred thousand is. I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Really cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I was just thinking that Vex Offensive being in mid-November, which, how many days are left on the artifact now? Less than 60? Yeah, I think so. Around? 50-something. Um, but that puts us, oh no, that puts us in December still. Yeah. But um, I was just wondering if Vex Offensive plays into what's going on with Akora in the building and, you know, the final assault, that is. I hope it does. I, so, I, I think it probably will because they've said before that they want these seasonal events to chain into the next season. So, like, what we were talking about earlier... Right. It's like 
you know, yeah. whatever happens with this will influence the start of whatever the next season and, and then the end of season nine will influence whatever happens in season 10. They want that to be more of a thing instead of just mm -hmm. these isolated little pockets of story right. things that don't link together whatsoever. Because this it, season it, is about Ida and then we never hear from her again. Right. Yeah. And it's, yeah. you know, they, they want to have it all chained together into some coherent story. So it actually feels like we're going somewhere instead of just like, Oh, this thing happened. And now yeah. this thing over yeah. here happened. Which I think is good. That that's what I've wanted for a while to feel it's like more interesting. We're going yeah. somewhere. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, we're for on sure. a path. Yeah, instead of just bopping it didn't, around. Didn't didn't Luke also say that it would be okay for some of these major characters go to go away for a while? Yeah, right. Sure. Exactly. And so I, I think that maybe we are seeing that if we put our tinfoil hats on that, that area behind Ikura is going to be maybe where the new speaker is housed, and it's not going to be Ikura. Maybe she goes away and. Like Watts says, uh, Osiris comes in and he's the. I think it should be Callus. I think we should. Like <laughs> Callus turns up. Jesus. Jesus. That with power in the like... tower. Yeah. <laughs> the the Callus in the tower. Hour. Okay. Yeah. Now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> All the robots are dipped in gold with ruby eyes. Yeah. Exactly. Like now we can we talk about the raid? Yeah. Let's talk about the raid. All right. <laughs> I need you guys to tell me all about it. Well. It's awesome. For oh, one, spoilers yeah. for you, Pope. Back to oh, the. I'm okay with it. Black Guard. I watched awesome. it. Yeah, but wait, wait. Before we get started on it, all right. I know we're going to talk about the raid, oh, but I wanted. Briar just had the most upset face I've ever seen. Well, Briar is going to get so used disappointed. To comms clear. Comms Ray's clear, Briar. Comms clear. <laughs> comms clear. <laughs> comms clear, please. I knew it was. I want to do a huge shout out to Blessius, Typhoon, Trav, and Mav Show. They took on doing the raid race coverage as kind of like a ESPN Red Zone style coverage of the raid race. And I'm going to tell you, they did a phenomenal job and really okay. raised the level. Um, we had done it one time before and it's just a, and this time it just really connected and I was really proud of them. We had a ton of time, fun watching you guys raid. Tell us about the raid. Uh, real quick about that uh, raid coverage. So I am uploading that to YouTube. It, I uploaded it once and it failed after six hours. Uh, so I got a little discouraged, but I am going to try again. <laughs> <laughs> it was long. I mean, it, it for some reason, you know, it took the it took our community seven hours or so to to beat it. So. What was the world's first time? Plan was it ascend? And they did it in like six and a half hours or something. Mm -hmm. Something that's like impressive. that. Six thirteen. I'll, I'll check it. Hang on. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, it was a little over six. Uh, six hours, 14 minutes. Yeah. Next one came at six hours, 16 minutes. And then there was a minute. two minute difference. Wow. Can you imagine Pass that how they feel on? about that? Dad? Uh, Just being two minutes off, man. Yeah, I can't imagine. And then the next low, one low. was just <laughs> under an hour later. <laughs> wow. Uh, Dad, how do you feel about the overall pacing and like the, uh, the how long it took for the world's first? You know, because like, um, we've had some differences. I, or I mean, like there's been some differences throughout the past uh, year. With that, the way yeah. these uh, raids have been completed, um, I thought that this time around was totally fine, um, especially given the length of the raid. Even though it didn't like, there's still technically four encounters, but they were set up a little bit differently compared to a raid layer. Um, I think six hours for World First is totally acceptable mm -hmm. as in terms of pacing. Um, I think. The amount of teams that got it done in under 24 hours, like 96, 94, 96, something like that, wow. um, yeah. which I think it's fine. It's not two, but it's not right. like 7,000. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. That's fine. Did um, they extend the 24 hours too? They did. Then they I, took I it away. don't know. No. Yeah. So they I think what had happened, I think what had happened is they. If you were in the instance when the 24 hours is going to be over and you still had contest on, they gave you an extra two hours initially with contest on or something like that. You just didn't know it. Um, but I also think that from 10 to 12, if you had contest off, you could still go in and then get the emblem or something. I, yeah, I don't know what actually happened. All I have is the context of that initial tweet and then then them rescinding that yeah, tweet so at this point a, it's yeah. if you got it on 24 hours congrats if not better luck now. yeah so just under 100 teams got the 24 hour emblem like, yeah and it makes total sense i understand bungie kind of going back on 
saying something and then retracting it from my perspective who did not have any chance of competing for that i think that was the fairest approach simply because the contest rules are what made it challenging yeah for right. you're gonna get the emblem without the contest rules right. applied so, it's not it's not the same game so for context the reason why they did that was because the the game went down for a couple hours or like they had some yeah. maintenance and that's why they wanted to extend it and then at, in retrospect they're like actually that's not really fair so let's go back to just being under the 24 hours if they had come out and said like earlier in the day that they were extending the contest modifier two hours to make up for that that would have been like i think most people would have been okay people with that known like, said, as okay, long as cool. It's still within contest. You're fine. We wanted to make up for server maintenance, whatever. That's fine. But they didn't communicate anything until after all of it was over. Yeah. Right. That's what also kind of confused Yeah, because there was people. people who obviously were up like all 24 hours trying to go for it. And if they had known that right. it got extended, then they would have been like, well, let's go for the last two hours to make that happen. Yeah. But they didn't communicate Not that. to mention the teams that were like, all right, let's just get in there the moment that contest is over so yeah, that we right. can actually experience this thing you know there were tons of clears within the first two hours of it yeah. uh uh being off so i that's yeah that's not the same at all like contest and not contest is night and oh. day difference yeah, yeah. so oh, let's, it is very let's different. talk about that actually i think this mm -hmm. time around i think they nailed it 100 percent with the with the way contest was with there oh, being yeah. four or five days for leveling up and then the raid and like the the pacing it was very difficult but it was still doable if your team was super coordinated you know how'd you feel about it Dana? um yeah I, initially i was very worried because i thought that too much prep time would allow teams to come in with like too many loadouts and too many options and i enjoy um in the world first race the the scrappiness of it where it's just like all right i'm you know, I'm 920 with a bunch of garbage on. Let's make it work. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's what I liked about Crown is that you barely, barely had enough time to get to level. But if you were at level, you were probably working with like whatever garbage you were able to get. And then if you infuse that garbage into your good stuff, fine. But if that loadout didn't work, you had to make it work or you had to use stuff that was going to lower your level. So I really enjoyed the scrappy nature of World First Chase. This time around, I think because combat was so uh, difficult, it was very tightly tuned, but but difficult enough where you you know it was still kind of a struggle. It, it didn't end up being as much of a problem as I thought it was going to, be, which is good. Mm -hmm. So I I thought it was fine. I was worried about it. It I thought it was fine. Nice. How'd you guys feel about it going through the raid? I liked it. I thought contest was in a really good spot. I think crown felt not as good with the contest modifier on. I think that this one felt, you know, manageable. We were pretty under light and it was challenging, but manageable. And it just felt really satisfying, um, satisfying level difference with the different scaling, mm -hmm. which was really nice. So yeah, I thought they actually nailed it with that. It felt like I was struggling but not to the point where I was like, okay, I can't do this. Yeah. So, yeah, it was really good. Yeah, except I'm not sure. That's how I felt all up until we got to the last in encounter. But at that for our team, you know, that was 10, 11, 12 hours in. We were starting to, to just feel the time pain but man that, yeah that's what i said you know the person who's always talking power per hour i was like oh man like whatever it's, it did did turn out that it was like whatever five six hours a day pretty reasonable you could get to um 920 mm -hmm. oh it was playing. super reasonable yeah. yeah it was more reasonable than we've ever seen that in other words it was accessible to more people than ever and that makes me super happy they weren't holding back the power level from there yeah what, what i saw was it very much was about well Okay, power is only the least of it. It's your team, Coordination. you know, skill, working together, and also being prepared, like you were saying. Um, that's the stuff that I felt the pressure on. I was like, man, I didn't get my artifact all the way level up, and I didn't sort of have things sort out. But, that, you know, that's on me of I needed to spend some more time doing that because um, I was chasing power so hard at the time. But I was really happy 
with that. Um, I don't think I thought about it a lot. I was like, I personally would have like next Saturday. I don't think that makes sense now going that far out, making people wait. I think it removes the hype. So there's no, of course, right. There's, Oh, I wanted a weekend and I wanted, you want it all right. But, um, I think it's in the right spot. Um, you know, yeah, this was the first time it was on a Saturday, right? Yeah. 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 And I, I really liked that it was on a Saturday. I, I feel I like agree. having it on a Saturday makes it more accessible to, you know, frankly, people with jobs or school. You know, like you don't have yeah. to be a full time Destiny player to have a shot at getting a world's first at uh, a raid just because they moved it to Saturday. You yeah. still got to put in the time during the week at night, you know, trying to get raid ready. Um, but because of contest like that, I feel like that's more attainable too. Mm-hmm. So that, the the beating the the raid during contest isn't about just throwing yourself at destiny for 18 hours a day mm-hmm. leading up to it it's about actually executing the raid and i think it's a different challenge but i i think it's a like to me it's preferable and it, it was a uh, pretty awesome i knowing that i could watch it as a person that has a full-time job sitting yeah. down on saturday and being able to watch it pull up with a cup of coffee get excited about it and um, really be able to be a spectator for something like this. It was a lot of fun. It's super fun to watch. I always loved watching Worlds First and following all the teams and it's it's a really awesome experience and yeah, on the weekend it actually enables people to be like, oh, I get to actually have maybe even a watching party with my so, with my family and my team. Speaking of viewership, cool. Dado, I hear you broke some uh, viewership records for your <laughs> channel, right? Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, it was the most amount of people I've ever had at the channel. 81,000, I think we capped that's out really at. Awesome. Wow. That, that is that's nice. a massive number. Congrats, man. Yeah. Congrats, man. So Yeah, that's Thank incredible, man. Congrats. Really, Tell them about yeah. Twitch Prime. I was, uh, <laughs> no, I didn't. I, I probably would have joked about it if we placed a little bit better, but we got 14th, and I was just like, oh, I don't deserve anything right now. I, uh, I was impressed, Dado, when I tuned into your stream and you had already beaten the raid. This is after we quit. We quit and we 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 decided to continue on Sunday. So we quit. I was going to bed. I'm like, I'm going to see what Dado's up to because I can see he's still streaming. And you're helping another team with the raid. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was trying to, you know, like it's the one day of the year where like, you know, you're, you're trying to get people the 24 hour. room. We didn't end up getting it. But, you know, you got to at least try. Right. Yeah. Like you only got yeah. 24 hours. So you got to put in all the effort that you can absolutely yeah. yeah and uh i've, I've been you. liking seeing some of the feedback from people who have never done a world's first and i hope that there's a greater appreciation for what world first raiders uh go through at least from the ca- more casual perspective i've seen a lot of like man i really want to try that again now that i kind of have a grip of what i'm doing mm-hmm. and then i've also seen uh, it was great to experience a world first chase. I am never doing that again in my life. <laughs> oh my God, that was hard. Especially um, when you're a content creator on Destiny. I saw a lot of that. It's like, well, now I'm so exhausted and I've missed so many videos that I could have been making on like PvP weapons and like, yeah. you know, the the Vex offensive weapons, which is great in PvP. But yeah, after world's first race, you are exhausted. Oh, I yeah. wouldn't trade it for anything Super. though. I, oh, yeah. I feel like I'm super lucky to have you guys as a raid team because we were Cause literally we laughing <laughs> our asses off for 13 hours straight. Mostly <laughs> at Frankie Two Times expense. Thank you, Frank. Yeah, thanks, yeah thank you. Wow, thank you guys <laughs> so much. Thanks, thanks for taking the break for that, honestly. I really yeah, appreciate it. I got I mascara tuned in a few all times. Thanks for so taking yeah. that uh, very, in a very creamy way, Fran. You were very creamy. <laughs> Vex milk is what they're referring to. Nah, it was a lot of fun. It's funny. I don't the think whole... it is. The whole t- you see how they treat me. The whole time I had um, my raid labeled world's funnest raid, uh, even though I would have loved to get first. But it, honestly, it was the most fun for the most extended period of challenging six person, you know, gameplay I've ever had. Um, and that is a testament to the team, but also the raid design. Like I, you know, I never really felt frustrated by what was going on and um you know it was really once we got to the end though there was some like maybe i don't know if the tether mechanics were truly broken or what was going on there was a little stuff of the last encounter when we got there that i felt like whoa it just jumped from (laughs) this is sort of perfect to okay they're serious about this ending which probably (laughs) was the right thing to do yeah um yeah 
That was the only point. And at that point, you know, we were going on 14 hours and we all said good night. Yeah. yeah. See tomorrow at noon. I, yeah. I felt like I felt like brain exhaustion was at an all time high at that point. And that that puzzle like that, that is the challenge is to get to an extreme puzzle in a quick enough time. So you still have some mental energy left over to solve that puzzle next. And I, yeah. I feel like by that time we were out out of gas. Yeah. 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 But we, we got it to it on Sunday and we beat it pretty quick. Yeah, we yeah. we solved it really quick once we had rest. And like I didn't look any strats. Yeah. I don't think anybody looked at any strats. And like it, no. it was obvious with contest Did modifiers watch. off. What yeah, the yeah, strat I didn't was. look at any strat. Definitely. <laughs> Didn't watch any. Video. Okay, I did. So I was going. Well, to I was not. Briar's joking. <laughs> this, this, uh, this this question's for for Dado, but I. So I haven't done the raid yet. Okay. Uh-huh. And um, say so I'm going to do it this weekend. What what do I? What are some tips that I should go into, or what light should I be? What 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 are some of the things that I should be ready for to jump into the raid for the person that hasn't done it yet? Um, you're talking like loadouts or just like advice for the raid itself? Light, or... level, loadout. Light level, loadouts, um, weapons, how would anything you, that you How would can... you tell them to get good? You know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I would say at least 930 uh, to have a comfortable time. Okay. You know, if you're 920 for the first, you know, three quarters of the raid, you'll probably be okay. But 920 is what was the contest modifier. Right. So if you're 920 going into the final boss... Yeah, you hurts. know, at least you'll have some other people who are higher level, but you are going to get like torched up by the boss and and anything else. Um, so I'd say comfortably is 930. I would bring uh, an Izanagi's burden. I would bring an auto loading grenade launcher or auto loading holster grenade launcher. Um, the only friend sort of... is about that gun. Weird. What the burden? I was using it. They were like, "Fran, just please use Whisper," which is <laughs> Whisper was awesome, but I was all about is Nazi. Oh yeah, we were. I, I mean, my team on on contest was all using Risk Runner so that we would have an easier time rebuilding because of the arc shield. Oh, building could actually, Dado. Do you want to talk about how important building? Do you think board building? Yeah, how is important a good do you think item? it is? I'm curious. Uh, yeah, tell us. Br- in, unless you have a strategy that revolves around not building, which I have heard some strategies that, oh, that really? raise your hands. What, what, if, what if there's just no uh, strategy and you just... no, then I would say strategy. building that is, is paramount to success in that encounter. What I if you've done it without building? <laughs> if you've done it without building, then uh, that's fine. They but I imagine most Wait, people are cursed us out saying he will not wait i have the question for data okay (laughs) data true reaction to this and i mean be serious about it yeah okay two teams i'm on uh the team where we're not building and and the right side was and i and we literally have the discussion say look building seems important will you please build briar and taft (laughs) and they're like briar legit was like i'm not having a conversation about building (laughs) if you were in that position and you knew building is important like what would you do on the raid this is important i would say you're gonna build or i'm gonna replace you (laughs) well you can do that i'm not that all right i don't have the the legendary i I was saying that too i would say i I would explain why it's so important to be rebuilding okay because it especially with contests can you give them uh the the lecture on why it's important that would be great it's important to reduce chaos. It might not seem like a lot. It might seem like jumping up and down is a good way to avoid, you know, the damage and all that. But having a safe place to recuperate is incredibly valuable for contest rules, have. right? For for no, for everything. For <laughs> no, it that, looks like that it's is a good lesson. Oh, life. weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the thing, especially was, for the... contest, you want rebuilding, but even non-contest. Uh, you know, I've struggled when, when people fall behind on their building, you want, you know, obviously if you have a well of radiance then you can counter a lot of that during damage phases and whatnot, but even on non-contest people who struggled with rebuilding tended to have problems getting other things done on their side, like killing Cyclops. So slow slide cyclops. <laughs> we definitely skills. struggle with killing. Kill, uh, we people. definitely didn't struggle with killing the cyclops. On Towards the, the end, I heard lots of "Well, we need help, oh dear God." <laughs> no, they yeah. It, so uh, <laughs> yeah, so it, building is very important. You can get the fight done without building, but only as long as everyone is on the same page with the fact that you are not going to be rebuilding. So let me otherwise let me throw this out it's here. It's very easy. If you don't, <laughs> if go. you don't build, then you don't have death boxes spawning all the time. Because it's a death box when he takes away land and when he when you rebuild land that happens right. There. And if you're if you're aware of the safe zones, 
then technically you can get by, especially with higher light. You don't take as much damage in the milk. Right. Right? Yeah. Like, what, yeah. Once, you're, no, I, once you're above 940, like, staying alive is actually pretty easy, so long as you're not yeah, literally no, sitting I'm, in the I'm milk. I'm not going to argue against non-building strategies, because I've had people say, and come into my chat, like, oh, we just did one where we didn't build. And I'm like, okay. We well, yeah, are now on the same page though. Yeah, and now. Nine, right. And now you can do that on contest. Yep. You're not getting away without building on contest. Yeah. Um, and I want to so point out. I, I want to point out that we yeah. weren't doing it with contest on for the building. We were doing it no, afterwards. We it was Sunday. Evening. Yeah, it was Sunday. <laughs> I you still think it's important to keep yourself organized. <laughs> yeah. We well, we started off building, and every time we built something went fucking horribly They're wrong. And we're like, you know what? Every time we do this, we get a negative response. It's like we're getting <laughs> zapped when we you yeah. know, we go for the food. So we stop going for the food, and then we beat the raid. So, you know. So so building is all about <laughs> making good judgment calls exactly. at the time. It's it's a very um, mm. on-the-fly maneuver. So you can see why we couldn't get, her, get yeah. it right. Yes, yeah, so I was about to say, you want Briar and Hefty to make good judgment calls on the fly? I was on a side that was peaceful and it, You guys relaxing. had it down. Did, yeah, I was impressed. It, it generally requires you to be, <laughs> to be aware of, like, it, or rather, it requires your entire side to kind of realize, like, hey, there's no ads up. And we yeah, just sent someone place. in, and yeah. our Cyclops is dead, and yeah. we have really easy positioning build, to rebuild yeah. this thing. Let's go right now. Yeah, yeah. It 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 makes things like when we went for DPS, like little things. It was fine, but we would be running all the way across the side to find a place to DPS when there could have been land there. Should have been anyway, floating. It's totally doable. Should have been floating, Fran. Instead of uh, all right. <laughs> Can we talk about like the raid? Like kind of go through the raid and talk about the encounters, or is that yeah, too would, so? Be. Before we do that, I did want the last stuff on contest and power power and all that. The one thing I want to put out there, and I hope it makes it back to Bungie, and hopefully they've considered it, was I would love to have seen contest as a mode, just like we see with oh, Adept yeah. and Legend of Mass, because be nice. I would have liked to finish it that way. Mm -hmm. yes. um, yeah, what do you yeah, think, that Dado? Cool. I, I've had many conversations with people. Um, Char had a great idea when I was talking with him recently of just have contest mode always be a thing, and... Uh, give people the 24 hour emblem in like a different variant, like make it a different color or something like that. Or maybe just, yeah, I don't know, something like that. So for people who want to go finish the raid with the contest mode on, they can get that satisfaction of doing it. Whereas you give the 24 hour emblem to the people who did in 24 hours, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but give idea. people a way to challenge themselves if yeah. they want to be challenged and then reward it as such with yeah. that. I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, you got you got Glad out here, like a three man. The end. I mean, pff, not in contest. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm messing. By the way, <laughs> uh, amazing that people so quickly like are three banning. But wouldn't that be cool if you could do it with contest? On? So yeah, I, I think having contest would be yeah. The just, just as a mode, you know, maybe maybe it doesn't need to be twenty light levels. Um, but. Yeah, no, forget no, it. Whatever it was on day one, so I, yeah, you keep, keep it that saying. way. I think, if, yeah, if that's fine if they want to do that, or if you guys, if you think it's a good idea for them to be able to enable contests at any moment, if you want to do the raid that way. What I don't think would be a good idea, though, is to have the best loot behind the no. contest dropping. Oh, no, 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 no. But just a different color 24 Can hours. Can I ask yeah. you why? Great idea. Well, that's what we had oh, with Heroic, okay? So in the past. See, contest is essentially... In between normal and, I mean, I'm sorry, heroic is in between normal and contest. Contest is the extreme, and then heroic, no deaths type of thing. Or, I mean, if you die, you're out of the, the raid until the encounter's done type of thing. In um, in D1, it was in between that, and the best stuff was typically locked behind heroic. And if everybody had to get good enough to do contest in order to get those drops, I think there would be that, like, mountaintop recluse disparity that would happen again with like well i'm not good enough to hit 2100 in comp so i can't do this so i think a lot of people mm -hmm. would have a lot of tough experiences with lfgs to get those better tier gear so i think as long as it's cosmetic i'd be way up for them being able to un un us enabling contests at any time to get like an emblem or a ornament or something like that ornaments would be uh, awesome mm -hmm. yeah you, you guys do bring up good points and maybe that's there's probably two things behind it is one for all we know that could be server side stuff that they have to like patch in and out 
um, that it's not in the game yet. But if they do it, it does immediately raise this question. People are like, well, why am I doing contests then? Like, I just, I wanted the opportunity to continue to, but you make a good point. What like, if it doesn't reward I mean, you? What it if doesn't you get, match. Like, what if you get extra loot, you know? Like, we're looking at the legend version of Night Falls and stuff like that. What if you get, you know, a better chance of getting certain of the enhanced mods or more upgrade materials. So you get two drops instead of one I, drop. I was going to say encounter. double drops would, would yeah. have been my quickest suggestion if they yeah. wanted yeah. to put contest. That would be great. That'd work. I would do it. Like I would choose contest if I got double drops. For sure. Mm-hmm. Me too. That way it's not better loot. You're just getting it faster. If you're an LFG yeah. though, I don't think you choose in contest. No, well, I don't think you should also every get balance. the same loot. I, I don't say that about also every rate, it. and then like everybody figures it out. Everybody watches Data's video, and then they figure it out, and LFGs get through it in an hour. You know, I don't think they'd get through. I, but I also don't yeah, think you should you should balance the super hardest difficulty around can an LFG group do it right. totally. because it's inherently yeah. designed to be like contest is inherently designed to be very very difficult. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That well, honestly, that's why I think it's in a really good spot. Like the way this happens is i think a great framework for them to continue in the future have it on saturday yeah. don't make it an issue so you have to stay up like 24 hours to get light level ready for a raid that you're going to spend another like 20 hours in or something like that i think the pacing is fantastic i like all those things um just concerned about like longevity for people like if it's too difficult then there's like a it's too taxing essentially you know if that's the go-to like you only do contests because that's the only way to get the best stuff you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Double drops, though. That's, that's yeah. fun. Yeah, double drops is great. You get more loot. And people can still get the same exact loot if they do the regular one without contest on. It's just if you want that extra loot, you level up a bit faster because it's the, like, prestige pinnacle yeah. drops. Um, if you have a dedicated raid be... team that's, like, synergizes really... really well. Yeah. Yeah, there's not a lot of places mm-hmm. to kind of practice hard mode Destiny either. And if they kept contests around, it'd allow you to kind of pro- that would be practice cool. that. It is the one thing that I really like about Nightfall where like you have the multiple difficulty options now. I Love really it. wish that they had it for the raid because the raid on normal mode after experiencing contest mode it's a is a meme. Yeah, it, it's super a easy. Joke. Super easy. And and what I mean by that is not mechanics wise because like people are going to stumble like the average group is going to stumble more on mechanics then they are going to struggle not being able to kill a Minotaur. So I'm kind of looking for that combat intensity as opposed to just the mechanic intensity. Mm-hmm. It would be nice to have the option to have both um, back in the raids again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mm-hmm. agree. Uh, and I know we wanted to move on. The other thing I just wanted to share, which was uh, I was looking off the screen for a while because I was punching numbers in. I actually took the average um, t- time that it took based on raid report for Crown of Sorrow um for the you know the top you know 24 hours completions and that was about 17 and a half hours surprisingly uh, it was almost the same i mean i had to i'm a little off because i was typing 0.5 versus using the exact down to the seconds this time um but really interesting that it, it within the 24 hour average it took teams total average about 17 and a half hours That's fascinating. And the top 25 top 25 was a little different this time it took about um, <clears throat> Crown of Sorrow was like more like top twenty-five. It took about uh, eight hour in nine hours, and then this time it was about eleven hours. So, that sounds about right. A little longer for this, which makes sense. But they're not too far off, which goes to show you. Sounds like you need to join math class, Frank. Two times. What's, <laughs> What's this quick math right now? We're good at the math, not the actual aiming. You can you can be um, like on the side doing all the math in the Discord, right? Yeah. But um. You know, I think the only thing I want to point out there is, I, I guess it feels right, but it, it's taken me a while to, and I'm still in thinking about it. I'm like, so many people want to be a part of this, and it's for 100 people or less, or reasonably, without it being like a pretty crazy event. I mean, you're only getting 100, 150 but people it, through the door in 17 hours. That's the point. I don't, I don't, you know? But I don't, I don't think it yeah. is just for them, because I feel like the Raid Race, honestly, for me as a fan of the game, it's just for as much for me as well. I'm... Yeah, there's 81,000 people watching Datto. Like, there's probably just as many in the rest of the directory. I don't know how many the directory had as a whole. Uh, It was over 200,000 at at plenty of points in the day. That's pretty, that's a lot of people just like kind of watching. And then a lot of people. Oh, it's exciting. 
are gonna. I mean, watch. Des- Destiny raids are so masterfully created like the world looks beautiful the encounters are always exciting you don't really get experiences like that in fps games so i think that the world's first race being so well viewed on twitch is it's awesome because i love that more people get to see it because it's Mm -hmm. so good it's just it is incredibly fun to watch a highly skilled cooperative team going at an activity that is incredibly difficult to listen to them and to be able to swap between the different channels. I mean, that's what I enjoyed about the raids coverage is being able to flip between them and hearing how the subtleties of how the teams communicated with each other. You know, there was a, um, there was Fami's team was just incredibly kind to each other and patient. Like it was listening to them was was like, that's an interesting way of doing it. Hmm. Would you mind, would you mind, um, (laughs) Would you mind grenading over to the right, please? When we sp- oh, of course, thank you. You know, it's just this. It was this very calm, very, and then you switch between teams, and there's there's different strategies that were at play, and how they're how they present ideas. It's it was really fun to watch, and uh, yeah, uh, and, and incredibly entertaining. I think we need yeah. to talk and about again, the, the-, uh, the encounters. Yeah. yeah, let's let's go through let's them. Do that. I, I yeah. like it, by the way. I have a question for Dado. When the uh, the one boss goes and does the thing that one of your teammates has to go stand in, otherwise you die. What do you call that? Oh, uh, the voltaic over over overload. Yes. Yeah. When you what when do you, the, what do you when call the, the energy? What's the shorthand what do you do? For that? Yeah. When I mean, what's your call out for it's something? happening? What do you what do you call? Oh, uh, I, I don't think we've really developed one. I called it a hairball in my guide. <laughs> it's it's like, it does look like a hairball. And I, and I, I like base that. that off the fact that occasionally the boss will um just launch one off uh the cliff. <laughs> and I feel like that's something like a like a cat would do. <laughs> just kind of like <laughs> like yeah, wow. it's over there. <laughs> so I just call it a hairball, but I don't think we have I think we just call it energy. Very professional. No. Yeah, we, I, I don't we, think we've we've come up with like a, a joke name for it just yet. Uh, yeah. We started. Did calling DCB his... have a name for it? Oh yeah. Yeah, we started oh, yeah, calling we it the poop right away. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was like it was like he's gonna go poop. That's the first thing we said. Is like he's gonna go poop. We were thinking of it as like a, a puppy, and you gotta go pick up the puppy's poop. Yeah. You gotta scoop. Yeah. That's what we were scoop it up. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we were like, I'll I'll scoop. I'll scoop. Yeah. And eventually that one. I guess it was on the third. Yeah, the third encounter, I just started calling it the butthole. I'm like, butthole's moving. You got to get, go chase the butthole. So we were, we were with that guy actually for a while. We started with him <laughs> in the first encounter of the raid, right? Where yeah. you kind of, yeah. you see him, you meet him. What was his name, Dado? Do you remember his name specifically? The Consecrated Mind. The Consecrated Mind. He kind of looked like a... Like a very a... cute puppy. Wow. You, <laughs> you definitely are a cat person. <laughs> <laughs> I would go with squid like harpy. Adorable. Like a big hydra or yeah, Even big more harpy. Adorable. No, it's a high it's definitely a harpy, it's but so it's like it, it's a harpy, yeah. Yeah, it's got like I like it when he pops out the ground and kills you. That's it's thing. got this crustacean slash like squid thing going on. Like squid like for sure. Yeah, it's yeah, so cool. you meet him, well, like him first off and he kinda he kinda like drops these energy cubes and um it's we split up into two teams one team kind of forged ahead and cleared out the road ahead while the other team was making sure to pick up those energy cubes and keep us alive but, because if you don't pick up the energy yeah. cubes you wipe. You die. well they also teach you the tether mechanic too this is this right is right like, off the bat this is essentially mechanic. the the thing for the raid is like this tether thing where you connect an energy point to an end point or sometimes you have mm-hmm. to connect it all together and that was cool and frustrating at the same time like it it's buggy, but it works, you know? I, I, I don't think like the buggy. tether is as buggy as people say I agree. that it is. Yeah. I, I think people use that excuse as, oh, I wasn't in range properly, or I kept getting out of range, or someone else moved out of range, or well, I broke line of sight. People blame the game and not themselves. That's not... That, the only time I that. saw like a legitimate no-holds-barred no, no, no holds barred bug was that time that the... We we're in the final encounter, and the the piece of the ground had already disappeared, but it was doing the animation that it was going to disappear again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we, we had we had that, we had that as well. Couldn't tether and... that. We couldn't yeah. tether while we were in there. That's the only time I saw it not work legitimately when it should have. Yeah, and and I have and I've had some issues with you know tethering to a node that 
is already healed, but like the end node didn't go away. So it kept chaining to that one instead mm -hmm. of the one okay. that I wanted it to. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, I could have just put myself in a better position to make sure that it went to the thing that I wanted it to go to. So maybe a better so, term is finicky. It can be finicky. You can control it, mm -hmm. but you just need to know the the, the nuances of yeah. how it works. You just need to get good tefty. So That's back yeah. to that first Definitely encounter is you kind of have two raid. You have two teams of three, and you're kind of like you're sw you're you're swapping between the two teams of three. Uh, whereas one team is always picking up the energy that the the boss is puke, uh, puking out, <laughs> and the other team is kind of forging ahead. Plan and opening doors using the tether mechanic until you come upon this field that's filled with hydras <laughs> who are all shooting kind of purple death at you. And you just got to run across this field, making sure somebody picks up the poop and gets to the end of the field, which is an incredibly fun moment. Yeah, yeah that was really cool. That was a super cool reveal and super cool moment in that boss fight for sure. Yeah. It, it the was. field is covered with flowers. It's in the black garden. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. It's dangerous. God, beautiful. It's chaotic. Mm -hmm. It's really a fun moment. Yeah, they had that, a lot that of was good, really well put together. They had a lot of good environmental reveals yeah. in this yeah. place. A oh, ton yeah. of great environmental reveals. So good. Yeah. Uh, what was the second? The second well, one was... We go was... to the jumping puzzle after that, yeah, right? Yeah, that's the main. Uh, it looks like, like Avatar. Out of fern gully. Yeah, Fern Gully, Avatar yeah. type of thing with like the it's giant tree beautiful. roots. beautiful. You know, of course, Warlocks struggle really hard with that part, and it's great, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was really glad I was a warlock. Wouldn't know anything about this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I played warlock this time. Yeah, I played hunter most of the time I these think, days. But it was, I think it was we were maybe play. joking initially when you were like, oh, we're going to make Fran be a warlock. And then Fran was like, you know, I got you. I'll do whatever. And we're like, guess Fran's a warlock. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, I knew joking. we need, needed one. I, you know, I always was a warlock originally. I My just, favorite just moment of the it. entire raid was... We're in the jumping puzzle, and Fran says, I fucking hate warlocks. So I, and I'm just like, put up my hands in the air. I said, so, welcome to DCP, Fran. Yeah. So what was funny about it was it was at the very end jumping puzzle stuff. And uh, I had just literally said, I'm like, oh, man, this feels good to be a warlock. Literally like three minutes before, because I was cruising over some really big spots with the, the windmills and all this stuff. And no. then... There's this one spot where you cannot just simply jump up over this tall ledge. You got to find a little spot, I think. And I just kept hitting my face on the wall. I was so, oh, everybody got ahead of me. I was so mad. I was like, I can't keep. That up. was the that was Fran being actually yeah. angry. It, it broke wall. me. It did. I didn't that drop was the an moment that Fran Fran broke. Uh, so you get through the jumping puzzle. The second encounter is kind of. Uh, we called it a tower baseball defense. diamond. Tower defense. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's tower yeah, defense. Baseball. Yeah, yeah. There's uh there's kind of four confluxes that you have to open well, up and defend. Yeah, and this harkens to uh, Vault of Glass because you know the, the the confluxes are back. You got to defend Conflux, points, yeah. and Vex are coming, mm -hmm. and they want to sacrifice too, which yeah. is like I actually really enjoyed. It was a really fun Me encounter. Too. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed it with contest but now knowing how much stronger we are in this place i feel like this is going to be the encounter where it's just like okay you just want to bum rush are they, it. are they spawning yet like when uh when are they going to spawn and it's just going to be because again <laughs> it's down. one of those encounters where you can't really make it go that much faster um but during contest yeah it was so definitely uh it kind of is so the confluxes of the templar yeah, Just there's four up. confluxes <laughs> in kind of a diamond shape or a square shape. You start off with the first one, you get to clear the first one, then you empower yourself by using the tether mechanic. And then for our team, one person stayed behind to defend that conflux, and everybody else ran around the circle. And every time we hit a new conflux, we'd leave one person behind. Uh, and everybody would just kind of defend their confluxes and every once in a while join up using portals to refresh their empowerment. And then eventually you'd get angelic um, enemies that would come, hydras that would come, who were very dangerous and very powerful. And at that point, you had to kind of strategize, where are they? And we had two floaters who would kind of come. Angel and watch. Help, yeah. So you'd have three people just kind of all of a sudden be at one Is that the, the first time they were introduced to that character, that, uh, that angelic? No. It's in the first no, encounter. It's in the first yeah, encounter. first encounter, yeah. yeah. They set a pattern okay, of you question. kill the angel, you unlock the, the tether box, that type of thing. Yes. 
what uh, to counter uh, your question for what did you call the energy? What did you call the angelic? I call it an angel. We just said angels. Yeah. Angels up. I think Watts said angels, angel, and yeah. we just kept saying angel. What'd we called it Angelica. Angel- there was a oh. very short, very short time where we tried Angela, but we just went back to Angelica. Okay. Angel- I just I liked being. I liked being on a team Good called question. Angel Watch. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Angelica. And then we could say Angel as we went through the portal, we could go Guardians out, and that made Fran really happy. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, I started saying Fran out at times when I was leaving. Yeah. Like Fran out. Um, <laughs> that made me laugh I think every time you did it too <laughs> uh, so once you do that it actually unlocks the third encounter in the same spot it basically unlocks the middle of that area that you've been running around kind of the square of the inside of it gets unlocked Yeah. the first kind of boss shows back up you're in the and, harpies home yeah and now you are um, you're, you're playing a little bit of gambit and you're yeah. Bank you're, those moats, guardians. <laughs> you're keeping right, him from doing right. a wipe, which he's got like kind of three spots on him, and you gotta well six spots, and you gotta kind of decide which spot you're gonna shoot. It's a little bit like shooting Riven in Last Wish, but not nearly as complicated. Yeah. Um, That's fair. And meanwhile, yeah. you, you're playing a little bit of Gambit, killing um, <laughs> killing Minotaurs and bringing moats over to a yeah, conflux to fill moats. the conflux. Flux this is what he was preparing BPS us for the whole time. Yeah, yeah right. That's what I was People were laughing. joking about Turns that. Turns out we he's a good guy. <laughs> yeah. How'd you guys feel about moats being in the raid? I, I thought it worked. It. I liked it. It's a good yeah. mechanic. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was fine. I, it, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, it's like you look at it. It's like, well, we've done this with orbs a ton. It could have, uh, you know, dropped a bunch of tiny orbs instead. But could have dropped a ball. I, yeah, what's up with balls? There's no balls. No. Is there yeah. any balls? In but this I will. Book? Yeah, but to the question, I do think there's an argument to be made. It's like, well, why were they shaped like moats? Because now, you actually, legitimately, people are trying to speculate with the lore. Is there some kind of like oh, tie in that he was legitimately training us mm. for this? Like a connection between because the he's... nine and the Life. Garden of Salvation. Right? <laughs> I know. I mean, it makes sense. Well, uh, the drifter is actually God. That's spot on, man. It's just it sounds <laughs> really, like Fife is right it's here. Really <laughs> bad. It's really bad. Fife <laughs> really agreed. Yeah. Fife agreed to do a cosplay of you, Fran, if you did one of him. So. Ooh, beautiful. I'd be I love that. Down to see that. <laughs> that would just That'd be, be great. Lovely. Um, uh, I didn't mind. Yeah, there, I didn't mind modes being yeah. in there. I like the I like the whole mechanic of it. I what I did mind is the uh, the bugginess of moats is still there like sometimes you walk right over one and it's like nope not gonna let <laughs> yeah. you pick you up yeah, yeah. you know yeah. like yeah. That was a little annoying. what was it finicky or was it buggy i think the moats are buggy <laughs> at times <laughs> it's, sure. it's the I same it's thing buggy. as regular gambit where it's it's all like latency and the game making sure that two people are not picking up the same mode uh, at the exactly. same time. Yeah. 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 So when you have to keep track of getting 10 at a time and somebody accidentally picks one up because the game was like, well, you're close enough. We'll give it to you. And suddenly you have to go kill another Minotaur. That was annoying, you know? Like, But it, yeah. preventable. It is preventable yes. so long as people are aware that a Minotaur is right there. Don't get next to him if you're not a moat picker-upper. I didn't. But I also I, liked how you kind of had to go, like, on the fly. Oh, shit. I accidentally picked up a couple of moats. Let's, you know, let's keep it going. Adapt. I'll just run over, deposit them, somebody cover me. Totally. You know, like... Mm-hmm. I, I like that yeah. aspect of it. I like when things are done on the fly and the braid allows for like dynamic thinking and that yeah. encounter allowed for a lot of that. And it was fun. Yeah. Did Almost the, the entire raid allows for it. It's a lot yeah. of just on the fly. Like, all right, I well, love- I knew the thing right now. So you come over here, but then this person needs to cover this spot because the angelic just spawned. And yeah, I, I enjoy having my, uh, having good judgment calls be rewarded. Yeah. Same. Yeah. In Destiny One, really a lot of the, a lot of the raids really relied on standing in one spot and doing DPS as a group. And I feel like this raid was a lot about running around, making good decisions, and just like making good things happen. Mm-hmm. And it, it was fun. Yeah. Did yeah. anybody test to see if um, I know this is a long shot, but Gambit Prime armor 
affected how the modes were. I have, highly, not, highly I have not tested, but I... I highly would, doubt it, too, but I wonder if uh, see, a collector like, set would... Uh, it, it wouldn't surprise <laughs> me if it did end up working just because of, like, whatever sort of... Using the game code. Just yeah, yeah. yeah, they just probably didn't even add an uh, exception to it, so it might yeah. just work. I feel like those but, perks, they're only active based on the instance, and, like, you know, you're in Garden of Salvation. Yeah. You're not in a Gambit match, you know? Right, yeah, right, 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 not, but Anyway, it'd be uh, fun if somebody tried so, and it works. <laughs> so, so speaking of DPS, like you, you do That's this enough right. times, you charge up your uh, your conflux, and then it's actual DPS time. The harpy gets a bug up its ass. It's like hauls ass he down the hallway. He goes so yeah. fast. Yeah, he's he's like, so slow. He wants that. He's, like, he's like, "What are you doing to my conflux? Get out of here, man! These people, <laughs> they need a sacrifice. <laughs> Jesus, my moats and all that." And he gets pissed <laughs> off about that and reveals the eyes. I really like this mm. part where it's like. You know, shoot as many eyes as fast as possible, and it's like the animation yeah. on that was incredible. The it's way really it was cool. like, yeah, it's just these yeah, rotating thing. sets of eyes. Yeah, that are and weird, then like he starts battles. backing up, and he goes behind a wall. So it's like all of a sudden, well, you, you find yourself your your team of six following him down the wall, shooting him. Yeah, doing DPS, and I I swear to God, I want Bungie to make like a video of just six guardians walking down that hallway just pounding him with sniper rifles because it, it, it felt incredibly cool to do DPS. Yeah, this cool. is the first time we've had a boss like that, right? Um, yeah. Like doing DPS uh, where you had... following the boss down the hallway? Like, you Definitely know, like that. Spe specifically like that, yes, I think so. Like DPS phase like where it's moving away from you. Yeah. Like, I believe so. It's yeah. doing its thing. Oh, it's right, like, I'm going to insta-kill you. Then you do enough DPS. Then it gets all demotivated and starts backing up back to its home. <laughs> you're like, yeah. you know, you're like, get back I, here, you know? I originally thought that you just had to be close enough to the boss that he wouldn't just annihilate you, which I thought would have been cooler to really um, make sure that people stayed on top of the boss and really chased it down as opposed to just oh. front loading a bunch of damage and then like casually walking up. Because um, mm. that's what we did for our like. I just, you know, we we wiped because the boss went it. super far away, and we're like, oh, maybe we have to chase it down. So we kept chasing it down, and I thought that would have been pretty neat. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Like, stay tethered to it, <laughs> right? No, the tether mechanic. We we actually ended up using Whisper, and we just walked the whole way. So we were walking whisper, the entire yeah. time shooting Whisper, it, which I felt like really it was cool. like a slow mo shot in a Quentin Tarantino film. <laughs> <laughs> <It was> yeah, yeah. <laughs> really cool. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was cool. So then you you beat that guy finally mm -hmm. after, well, for us it was like eight hours. That was a long <laughs> we long. took a, we took a long time with that guy. Yeah, took our time. Yeah, that guy was tough. There was a lot a lot of death going on in there. Uh, and you, you're confronted with another jump puzzle that's got some beautiful vistas, some cool puzzles in it. And a um, waterfall. Waterfall with a little the final cave boss in there. reveal. Yeah, yeah, and then finally awesome. get to the final boss reveal, and it's like this huge. Mega big Vex dude, uh, with this kind of crescent of platforms in front of him, and you've got portals to go through to collect moats to deposit at more confluxes. You got a boss who's basically erasing the ground yeah. underneath you. I mean, he's um, like a skyscraper, he's actually like orc size, right? Yeah, he's he's pretty, pretty big, tall. pretty, pretty big. big. Yeah. Was the uh, milk, the Vex milk, more damaging than what you would see when you? It was on, creamy. Uh, I'll tell you that. In contest, it, it was very creamy. Yeah, it was, in contest, it's it was it's a full, killer. Full fat Vex milk. I tested full cream. it because mm, I tried. <laughs> I tried to put an Arc mod on briefly for Arc resistance. I was like, so I jumped in the you know the in contest mode and I jumped into it. And I was like one, two, three. Uh, it was, I think it was like four <laughs> hits, maybe maybe five. And then I anyway I tested. That didn't do anything, but I noticed. Yeah, that was a good. Uh, to test it when we got contest turned off, I was like, oh, I can stand in this for eight or ten. It was somewhere around seven or eight hits or something when it was yeah, turned off yeah. to give you a, a de It was a huge difference. Um, it's painful. Yeah. yeah, even getting up to like 630 power, or I'm sorry, 930 power was like a huge difference from 920. Oh, yeah. Big difference. Um, so you <laughs> fight this guy. Uh, you got portals to go through to... You got to actually shoot the boss who's got a mm -hmm. couple of crit spots. And when you blow up those crit spots, it opens portals. If you go through the portal, uh, you're confronted with more Vex enemies who drop moats, who you can, which you can bring back to your team, uh, deposit in another conflux, which you have to protect. Uh, and if you and that get gives you 30, the enlightened buff. Yeah, if you get thirty moats deposited in your conflux, 
uh, on both sides, there's two sides, uh, you can start DPS phase. Uh, and it's a pretty fun encounter. It's pretty complex, though. There's a lot of moving parts when you're first learning it. And uh, especially in contest mode, survivability was a real issue because every time you open the portal to send somebody out or bring somebody back, uh, some Hydras pop up. Cyclops. And I believe Cyclops. they're a one-shot kill if they hit Cyclops you. Show Cyclops. Up, Cyclops are, yeah. If, I mean, if they hit you close enough, they'll one-shot you. Yeah, and contest. And it's Cyclops. The, contest, the boss the is shooting you the whole time, and plus there's just regular ads spawning in who not only are trying to shoot you, but they're also trying to get to your conflux and take moats away from your conflux. So there's, and, and the ground is disappearing, and if you're on the ground, when it disappears, you die immediately. There's a lot going on. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot <laughs> going on in that final fight, yeah. Yeah, they... I, yeah, I like how they built to. I mean, like Bungie historically always does this, where they have mechanics earlier in the raid, and then yeah. they all combine into the last one. But I like how they did. Like the first encounter had two of the mechanics, and then the second encounter had two of the mechanics, and then the third encounter had two of the mechanics. But they were all different combinations every time. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then they're like, okay, now they're we got all right. of them. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Let's try it. Um, yeah, but they're a, they, uh, they're no stranger to that to that uh, design. At all. Yeah, yeah. I felt yeah. like Wrath, Wrath of the Machine was the first one where they really nailed that concept of teaching you. Like, here's how you use the ball, the orb, and then dunk it. And then, like, not that they didn't do it before. That was the first one I remember where they really paced it out. And now you see, really, for me, you see the formula. It's like, you're going to learn a little something. You're going to do a jumping puzzle or, or go through somewhere. You're going to quiet down. Then you're going to do another mechanic. And then we'll do four of those, basically, for these currently is the way it's going and I, I think it's the right formula right now like i feel like the pace was really good yeah. it didn't feel slow although i haven't gone back like you said dad on played encounter to the little maze there um yeah i haven't got to try that I, I i like it in theory but i wonder if it's getting just a little bit kind of stale because yeah. it, it leads to with uh a part in the raid where eventually you're just kind of like okay well the jumping we, we kind of feel like we know what we need to do now and there's not like mm -hmm. there is a good chunk of like figuring things out but uh maybe not compared to previous encounters that we've had in the past where like like um king's fall well each had pretty unique things happening you know third and fourth yeah. encounter last wish sort of blended together last wish yeah had a lot of unique things where there was like some blending of things here and there, but like figuring out Riven was much different than figuring out um, uh, uh, Big Dude. Sanctified Mind. <laughs> Sanctified Mind. Yeah, it's a good point. And when you guys said that he was big, I was like, wasn't he basically based on in basically based uh, on Insurrection Mind, kind of? Wasn't it the size of like Scourge of the Past boss, like a little bigger maybe? Uh, Seems like maybe like using the bigger. same model. A little bit feels Maybe like the they, they're frame. all probably around frame, exactly. around the same size. Yeah, I think it was based on insurrection. It didn't feel like insurrection, but it was kind of like a robot stomping around like that. And I feel. To maybe to your point, that's why I'm bringing it up, Dad. I'm very happy. This is a very happy with the raid. One of my faves. Oh yeah. But we are getting to the point where it's like, well, yeah, we're we're bringing in the modes. I expected it. Uh, kind of looks like insurrection prime, and like it'll be nice to. Uh, we talk about it a lot still. Of like, is there going to be a Destiny three or Destiny next and something completely brand new? You know, at some point, I do think we need that. I'm I'm agreeing with you on that. Yeah. I I don't think we need necessarily Destiny three, but I do think changing up the raid formula in t in terms of how boss fights chain from one to the next would be nice. I think people were kind of getting kind of fatigued on the whole raid layer set up even though mm -hmm. that's the way that bungie is able to make a lot of these raids or raid experiences um having it follow the same thing as like non-boss fight jumping puzzle boss fight part one boss fight part two at at, a, at some point it's like okay how can we Mix freshen up this up a bit even if still all of the raid experiences have been very good like they i don't think they've had a miss on the raid experiences, at least early on, day one, week one, stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, like, I hear you guys, what you're saying on that. I personally don't mind the formula. I like the fact that it has good pacing, and if they they deviate too far, you could have a situation where it's like, well, this is kind of a slog regardless. 
I think the biggest thing that makes it a slog to do again and again is if the loot isn't good. You know? Like, if the rewards are subpar... I don't know. If the raid isn't fun to do again and again, to me, it's a slog. King's Fall, to me, was a slog to do over and over again. because oh, man, it, I like King's Fall. I was Fall. literally just standing in one spot. Like, you could literally, when you're teaching people to do that raid, you could literally say, if you stand right here on this very spot, there's no way you can get hit, and all you have to do is shoot this knight in the head, and we will beat this raid. Whereas in a raid like this, like everybody's got to be moving around. It's a lot more fun. It's a lot more dynamic to me. This is I do like the more mobile, much more fun. Raids. Yeah, like no, I, I'm not. I'm not talking about like, yeah, like yeah, that's mobility. Sign. I'm talking more like there's merits to the whole. Like we're going to introduce you to mechanics over the right. course yeah. of the raid, and then at the very end, you're going to combine them all. There's huge merits to that. Um, I just feel like over time it gets to be a little too samey and I'm wondering if there's something that they could do within reason to shake that up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm definitely up for seeing uh, evolution in the raid process. No doubt about that. Mm -hmm. I definitely like what they did with this raid though. And I think the pacing felt great. And I think the, yeah. the, the being more mobile hundred percent on board with all that stuff. Um, but I think when it comes to longevity and replayability, I feel like loot is a bigger factor in that that case because it's always. I feel like that's half oh, of the yeah. equation. Loot is part of it, but if I'm not having fun going in playing the raid, then the loot has got to be so fucking good. I mean, we've had a raid loot problem for a little while now, and I think there's sort of like I, obviously I don't know all the all, all the roles and all like the exceptions of perks that can go on weapons and the raid loot and stuff like that, um, but I know that certain weapons in the raid can roll with perks not normally on certain guns so like i think i have i'm pretty sure i have a swashbuckler auto rifle mm -hmm. yeah like yeah, yeah i like, really that's like that auto rifle normal. i got two of them <laughs> so i i like that if they <laughs> they're, that they're trying to spice up raid loot by not normally or giving perks that maybe not normally are on mm -hmm. certain guns. So yeah. two um, things. I'm sure they're don't good. Know the full extent. Yeah. Of the two things with yeah. the raid. Loot. Auto's good. Like the the guns themselves. It seems like a smaller pool of perks. So there's a higher chance of getting a good roll, no matter what, when you do get one, which I think is good. Yeah. Uh, and then also the armor usually rolls high stats because it is raid armor. So you have a higher yeah. chance of potentially getting like a high roll that's legendary. So all those. Definitely solid. I like that stuff. The, and you get mods. Yeah, exactly. You yes. also get mods as well that can help with the whole experience. Uh, the only yep. issue, though, is that there is no raid-specific weapon perks that happen. Now, again, there is there is mods for the armor, raid-specific yep. armor mods. I do like that yep. totally. But when it comes to the weapons, one of the things about King's Fall that I really liked, and I'm I'm in opposition with you on that, Briar. Like, I actually enjoyed King's Fall. I enjoyed doing it a lot, yeah, and, and I favorites. played it a lot as well. Um, but, like... Every raid in D1 had unique raid perks, essentially. Um, yeah. Like, from Vogue, it was Oracle killing. Uh, in King's Fall, you know, it was more taken damage and also auto-loading holster, essentially, was built into all the weapons. And I, I feel like it's a big missed opportunity to not put something in there that's directly connected to either the raid or the destination. Like, if all the raid weapons also have... Well, they have unique perks, it's just not raid-specific. In the weapons you're talking about? Tough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, they're not unique perks. Yeah, that's, in that's what I was. That was. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think they've diverted a lot of those like raid specific things into mods now, as opposed to being yeah. directly on the weapons. Yeah, I feel I like, like that's that a mess way. personally. Is... Yeah. I like if you could get like so if there was a perk in there that said you do, you're doing more damage to minotaurs in the raid, or it says when you're on the moon you're having more your reload speed or something like that is affected after a kill. Like then I'm looking at that with a little more build potential in my mind that happens. But right now it's like, okay, cool set of perks. Yeah. Or I like the gun yeah. look. Yeah. I mean, the weapons for start just have to be good enough though. Like, wouldn't you agree though, Teft? Like the auto's pretty solid. And the auto's fantastic. It's the only auto that can roll with swashbuckler as far as I know. I mean, with, yeah, without I, that, I it's know. got good base stability, reload. Yeah. It's got the 50 RPM. in the mag. It's like, a, it's a fantastic auto rifle. Right, but I mean, don't you think that one's good enough to feel like you have to go chase it just without any other perks that you really would want? It looks cool and it feels really good. If 
if auto rifles were better, yeah, but I think a lot of raid loot depends on where the meta is at any given moment, right? Like an sure. auto rifle can be super sick, but if no one's using what? autos or autos are not okay. that strong. What if I took Recluse away from you, though? Then an energy slot. Then I would like this game a lot more. <laughs> then you would. <laughs> exactly. You'd solve right? a lot of problems. But I feel like, of course, just use Recluse. But without Recluse, this is the answer that I, I felt that way. I got a pretty solid role. Um with auto, uh, sorry, with outlaw and triple tap, which at least for the raid in particular, and just nuking enemies and the distance, it's a really good auto. But uh, you're right, like the hand cannon looks cool. I don't know. I haven't heard anybody say like, "Dude, you should really go get it." Yeah, it's no. like we we as higher level players are more enthusiastic players. You're not enthusiastic players who have more time to spend than the average person on the game. Um, we can maybe appreciate those things a little bit more than others because we have the time to experiment with like, you know, oh, I got this auto rifle. We're going to try something with it. Whereas the average person who doesn't have as much time to play probably just wants to be using the most efficient things. So yeah. they maybe just can't or don't appreciate uh, like the, the variance that we can have in, in those weapons. We we have kind of a problem that we didn't really ever have a Destiny one in that like the the old stuff isn't going away so that there's how do you make new stuff that's really super interesting without making it more powerful than the old stuff? You the do perks, what they're doing these, with season ar seasonal these, artifacts yeah. is you give people stuff for a few months and then like okay we're gonna just we're gonna yeah but the weapons from the raid are them. gonna stay the same power no matter what right. You know, and, and like I mean, that's all, that's always been a problem in the do game. You want an SMG that you you like better than Recluse? Well, it's going to be really freaking powerful, and it's going to remain really powerful. You know, in Destiny One, they kind of sunset weapons by just you know not raising them up with power until they started with the they end up doing it. But yeah, it's it's a tough call because you know there's people like myself where I'm just like you know give me a fresh start like let me get rid of, rid of all this stuff. I want new stuff to mess around with give me the new stuff and then there's some people like no i i finally got this freaking hand cannon to drop with the roll that i want on it and now you're going to discontinue and i can't level it up like what the hell it's a mm -hmm. it's a really tough call to make it is yeah. it's just it a is. tough we, call yeah we talked about it on last week's show and i think that there's there's like a you have to have enough time go by is my opinion that you can sunset something like if they take away midnight coup right now which doesn't make sense but were something like that to happen, I'd be like, oh, bummer. Um, I really enjoyed using it. And some people do still use it. So you're going to have to switch something. So I feel like at some point, meaning we'll get to the point in Recluse's life, it's just too early, that you do, it'd be nice to do something like that, actually. And then other stuff can rise up. It's just, mm -hmm. it's got to feel like you didn't take something away that I just worked really hard to get, you know? Yeah. And I'm okay with that. There's so many good weapons now, actually. Yeah. I, think. I don't feel like... There are a lot of good weapons, yeah. Even though all you should use is a mountaintop of Reckless. But... <laughs> well, honestly, <laughs> I I never used He's Iznagi's Burden. <laughs> I never used the Burden because uh, it was like, again, a mountaintop Recluse and also just better options for DPS. And now that the reload stuff has been taken away, suddenly I'm like, well, okay, let's start using the Burger. And man, I finally got my Catalyst cool. leveled up and it is fantastic. But doesn't that... That kind of proves the point, though, is the only reason you're using that is because they nerfed Whisper of the Worm. Yes, it's true. Well, and but the auto-reload stuff. Yeah, it's the auto-reload was nerfed so that it expanded the sandbox potential for more things that are viable in the loadouts. Um, right. But also, that particular exotic solves two problems. Like, you need, you need um, heavy-level DPS, but you also need a regular sniper just to take out some stuff if you need it. Like... It's a really good solution, and it it's feels awesome. fantastic. It is, yeah. And yeah. The, un the unfortunate fact of the matter is that there's always going to be, like, a best thing. So, like, you, you can yeah. say, like, oh, True. finally, like, we get rid of Mountaintop Recluse. It's like, well, it's just going to be replaced by the next best thing. And then but what I don't want to see, Dado, is it because True. it's the best True. thing for two, three, four years. Right. No, I'm totally yeah. with you on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that thing. You know, if, if they can have seasons where the best guns rotate once a season to keep it that level of fresh i mean ideally you would be able to use whatever you want to keep things as fresh as you want everything would do approximately the same damage i don't know how interesting that would be because it wouldn't really good. yeah you gotta have things stand like, out for a time that's what makes it interesting yeah. to chase so There's as also... long as they're able to shift it 
every once in a while, like like what they're doing with the seasonal artifact, and like you know, void and arc this season are the go tos, and the next season will probably solar will probably come in, and either void or arc will go out. Yeah, mm-hmm. changing it, things up. Like so, that. I really like what's happened with armor 2.0 and i liked the the idea of building a build for the raid and all that and then you come over to weapons and it's way more simplified and it, it i feel like it's oversimplified you only have one option for a mod perk i think like possibly the solution in the future is to have a, a more complex system of energy points that go into weapons as well that you get to choose and those perks expire after the season so that way like you get your base weapons that drop a certain way but then you have to choose what to spec That's into really it. That's interesting idea. Yeah, like let's yeah. say you got um, the yeah, raid what's weapon. what's an example? Yeah. So let's say, yeah, so I got like triple tap outlaw on that raid auto, all right? And then let's say I had to uh, either invest XP or uh, the same leveling mechanic uh, for the armor to expand the energy bar. Like let's say it starts with one point of energy, but expands all the way to 10 or 5 or whatever the system would be. And then you'd have this mix and match choose type of thing of how many perks to put into it to sil- to build the perfect auto rifle, essentially. And then mm-hmm. that would expire at the end of the season. So there's a new chase with the new season. You know what I mean? I'm, I mean, so, I'm sure something like that is on their radar. I think yeah. armor probably just needed the attention more First. than than weapons did. Because yeah. I think Luke said, like, yeah. we're not planning a weapons 2.0 in, yeah. like, the super near future. But I'm, like, I'm totally on board with introducing more player agency yeah and- See, well, what they did with yeah, armor though i think it's so successful that it'd be silly not to look at it for a weapon it's yeah. true and i and i did want to bring up a point I, i've been trying to cut in but you guys were having this great conversation so i just wanted to lead it lead it but uh, um, quiet the comms made- down yeah calm, I want to continue. calm's, calm's quiet comes quiet but, comms yeah. clear. <laughs> comms clear. Comms clear. Comms clear. i love you briar you're you're an asshole and a friend at the same time that's great um <laughs> glad you see me in both lights i don't want to be put in any one rabbit hole you don't want to just be a friend data you, you mentioned <laughs> something about like the casual player not wanting to um mess around with gear or like or weapons and and just wanting not, something not that all worked. of them but i imagine so. right no no i but i want to make a point to that i, I think you were right up into a with the changes that they've made for this release have been fantastic for the casual player the ability to not have resources that that what you said was absolutely true last before this new update in dlc now i feel the agency to go off grab an auto rifle and make it my own by by not having to become bankrupt to to rank it up to put a new mod on it the changes they made to allowing to allow me to do that have allowed me to go out and go get a gun that maybe no no youtuber or no twitch person has told me that that's the best gun I've messed around with it and I really like it and it's the gun that I enjoy and it doesn't take that much to be able to get to a point where you can do that. So I think that while I agree that you are, you're, you're right with, um, it's just, we're at a better place, man, for, oh, for, are, at least for, sure. me. for sure, much better place. So yeah, yeah. Absolutely. shadow keep has marked like an amazing time for destiny because I have, Previous to Shadowkeep, I have never once wanted to masterwork a set of armor for a character. I've been like, eh, <laughs> whatever. I never masterworked any armor yeah. in the no, entire Exactly, except yeah. for the Solstice crap because I was required to for a quest. I have never had any desire at all. And suddenly I'm like, I want multiple sets for multiple characters, all masterworked. And yeah. I'm thinking about all these Ascendant shards I'm going to have to go and collect. And it's fantastic. Oh, it's so good. It's, yeah, it's great. It's so good, Tabby. It's way so more good. incentivized because more energy means more perks. It means yeah. more exactly. options, which means more yes. builds, which means Such you get to have more fun. More build out. Such yeah, exactly. Change. It's incredible. And then you Forehead. need to have like your, your PvP Forehead. loadout and then your PvE loadout because mods are 5,000 glimmer to switch and I ain't got that type of money. So you need to have, I printed <laughs> out like three recluses because I wanted one with like anti-barrier and then I wanted one with like backup plan and stuff. Um, not backup plan. Yeah. Like a mag, that's what I want. Um, and then also you're getting a loadout with like solar and arc and void because they all do different things. Void's mm-hmm. gonna give you like sniper and hand cannon mm-hmm. stuff, and arc's gonna give you shotgun stuff. So it's I'm making constant builds for everything. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm putting different mods on the different builds, and it's it's been really yeah. And a lot good. of things stack you, that you don't you really realize. Use, like you can actually make the builds kind of synergize looks wise too. Yes. You know, that so is, it's like kind of easy to identify. Yeah, it's like you can make your character look the way you want with 
the yeah. mods you want. I suddenly I, have I a reason I, to go do Eater of Worlds again because I mm -hmm. have resurrected the pumpkin and it's great. Mm. The pumpkin's back, but I need pumpkin's Armor 2.0 pumpkin. So I can't mm. just print out of the collection. What is the pumpkin? Oh, you'll see. Oh, One of these the Eater of Worlds. Okay. You remember the Eater of Worlds Titan armor? I was imagine like it's a lot puffy. like uh, my uh, big dumb gold idiot set. Except here is probably, probably orange. Mine's yeah. absolutely yep. a pumpkin. <laughs> okay. okay, it looks like Titan a armor stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I actually I'm feel incentivized to do the raids a bunch because I'm looking at armor rolls, armor stats. I'm thinking about mm -hmm. the affinity as well. Like I personally enjoy the affinity thing because it makes you choose. I like the affinity personally yeah. too. It, it makes me create more builds. Mm -hmm. What is that, guys? I don't. So each so each, each yeah. armor piece. Uh, comes with a certain element attached and only certain perks, mainly with regards to weapons, uh, can go into certain elements. So, for example, sniper is void. So if you want sniper-based perks, you need to have a void-based armor piece yep. in order oh, to put wow. sniper stuff in. Okay. Yeah, if you want if you want to be able to hold 24 shots of Izanagi's burger, you got to put six points of energy, so two sniper reserves in a chest piece, and that chest piece has to be void. Affinity based. Okay. So, okay. Mm -hmm. And then you can stack that and have instead of 20, you can have 24 shots in there. You know what's yeah. really funny? Uh, running all sniper scavenger perks in PvP and using Izanagi and picking up like 12 billion shots and then one shotting everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel it's going to be yeah. some side effects. <laughs> yeah. There may be some yeah, side it, effects. <clears throat> the mod stuff in particular yeah, is really cool. Like, there's all this stuff that I want to go back and do. Kind of in the same way that, like, you hear about a catalyst being good, right? Like, uh, yeah. I believe Iznagi's uh, burden is, comes out of Heroic Menagerie. Is that right? The catalyst? Yeah. Uh, yes. After fully leveling up your chalice. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Cause I don't have it yet. Um, and I need it, but I'm like, oh, I actually want to go back and do it. I'm totally down for that. Um, but mm -hmm. hearing about all these places, like, enhanced mods where are they coming out of right now that we know of high level nightfalls and right. i would assume the raid yeah and i think maybe the right but like that was another example of like i love raid perks and all but i want to play the raid because that would be a great example oh i'm also grinding out enhanced armor 2.0 mods like dope and that's something i've brought up a lot i'm like i don't want it to only be about the gear uh i want you know reasons to go back to the raid um and this always comes up during event season like they want me to go grind public events forever i'm like can you give me an alternative as well but anyway separate topic but grinding armor 2.0 in multiple places like that hopefully is just really cool um, well one of the I places really, I love doing, well, one of the places right now is doing the nightfalls over and over and in the oh, past yeah. in the past the nightfalls have kind of become a uh in destiny 2 nightfalls has been like a well Okay. I never did them, to They're, be honest. Uh, they were a joke. Yeah, they were a joke. They were, they were like, hey, <laughs> remember them. this time that we had Nightfalls and they were cool? It's like, well, that's gone now. And they finally brought that back. Like, they're the hardest content in the game right now. And they're re very rewarding. You get, like, end game enhancement materials or, like, um, yep. leveling materials. And you get and chances mods. for exotics that give you rolls because you need to chase rolls. And, yeah. Yeah, you need to like mm -hmm. chase all of your exotics all over again to get like the better mm -hmm. rolls on it with the higher the higher uh, points in it. There and, is And so um it's it's also really good cuz you can get enhanced mods from there where mm -hmm. you can't really find you can't find enhanced mods everywhere. So actually farming the harder difficulties of Nightfall is 100% worth it. Or it never the was. Biggest, it's rewarding. The biggest challenge I think right now for Destiny is the hundreds of thousands of new players right now that are dipping into this thing. Mm -hmm. New light and is not going over well. All the options that you ha have to do, Bye, and bro. all the things. See, Bye. that's what happens when you say <laughs> like new light is going right. well. Bungie, the bungee cut right. the cord. <laughs> yep. What you but say about new light? That one at all? <laughs> yeah, I've I've heard that um, if you're like a brand new player and you don't have someone to kind of escort you through the game, it is yeah. just like, what do I do? <laughs> and it feels more yeah. designed for people. We're like, yeah, come on in. Like, you could just like join us right now. Like, we'll tell you what to do. Blah, blah, blah. And then yeah. you kind of get like a guided tour from your friends. So it, right um, now is you 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 boot the game up. You do the first mission from Destiny One. It's kind of a modified version of that. Yeah. Then you are brought to the tower, mm -hmm. and there's no guidance after nope. that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. You're in the Have game. Fun. Like there's no nothing telling you like how to start the Red War quest. There's nothing to tell you. How to start anything. Might I suggest wow. some gambit? 
<laughs> wow, that's the worst advice I've ever heard. That's toxic. toxic, toxic. Yeah, that's... yeah I, I've heard it's uh, <laughs> tricky, and that's kind of where I was going with the Vex offensive stuff back at the beginning. Yeah. Like, it's not just us; it's not medium level, high level players. It's like it's a bunch of uh, ranges of people now, and that like something like that is just you know, baffling. But there's I plenty. will say this though: if you do have somebody to play New Light with, it's a fantastic experience getting into Destiny Two for free. Yep. My yep. kid is actually doing it right now, and he's loving Destiny 2 for free. Like He's really having a blast with it with his friends. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I think there's a there's a dangerous side of it in that um, some players like try to learn things or they see things. And like, in other words, you you think you know things, and because you make those assumptions, you're like more confused even versus like I think people should expect I mean it's definitely confusing but I think you should expect a game like this you can't I brought it up last week I think like don't you're not just gonna hop into League of Legends and be like oh I get it like, no. it's it's not just because it's a super evolved game it's also because it's complex and so you sure. also have to give it time um I'm not saying that man they definitely should be guiding well is there a tutorial you know, um, there's nothing Pope there's no no no, no. is there a, the question is is there a tutorial for like World of Warcraft are you when you jump in and you've a player that's never Doubt played it. before, how how not, long how long do they hold your hand before you are off on your own? Not a ton. They might give you like super basic, like when you make a new character, like a bunch of tips pop up, but it just kind of like is overwhelming because it's like fourteen tips at all the same time. Yeah. You're just like, uh, uh <laughs> just get through them. I just want to like yeah. nice round. Um, but but to be fair, World of Warcraft starts you in certain areas that are very basic, you only start with a couple of moves, maybe, and then a lot of quests will be like, oh, you leveled up, like, go talk to this guy so you can learn a new thing, and then it, right. it, it takes it very slowly. It's, new it's Light not starts like... you off with all three subclasses unlocked, but no tutorial on how to actually, mm -hmm. like, they don't actually tell you how to, like, go to that button to show your subclasses and show and talk to you at all about, like, why all these subclasses are different mm. that's crazy like there's yeah. nothing yeah. there to even point you it in the direction right. of like hey you, do you know you have three different jumps do you know you have three different grenades do you know you have three different classes three different subclasses and three different subclasses <laughs> underneath that you know like yeah you know you have for, access to all this but there's no no pointer in that direction for for comparison's sake uh you don't even get talent points until like level 10 or 15 in wow you only have your basic class. Uh, you don't go to a main city very soon. At least uh, certain races of uh, characters don't. And uh, you have a couple of moves, and that's it. For for anyone who does play WoW, it would be the equivalent of throwing you into a main city at level one to start, and then you would have to figure out where to go. Hmm. The yeah. WoW is like, we'll start you at a starter zone, and you will learn things, and then we'll go into like a sort of secondary starter zone. And then you'll go into the city, and then you can go kind of spread out. This, I think that if New Light just jettisoned you straight into the Red War campaign, it'd be a much smoother onboarding process. Because that will that gets you into learning about subclasses. It gets you into learning. You, know, you start with no power in the Red War campaign, right? right? It's like oh, that's true. you lost mm -hmm. your power, and now it's gonna you're going to build that up, and you're going to learn what each thing does as you build it up. And then you're going to... That's a good point. You're going to unlock all that. And even if you just did it on one character, at least when you move on to your second character, like you'll have an understanding of what this does. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's the double-edged sword, though. I agree with you, Briar. There is the other side of it, though, which is like it actually is pretty cool. You can just jump in. If you're that's willing true, to take the plunge. Yeah, friends. because... I love when a game allows you to doesn't assume that you're a total idiot, you know, and so it absolutely needs work and it sounds like it needs a lot of work in some ways, but I also don't want to be held back. So it's one of those, maybe we could get an option here. Like I'm a total beginner. I think your idea put in needs a to be tutorial book yeah. that you but can look But then, look at. you know, maybe you can That's skip good through point. a lot and just jump, you know, so to where, you know, jumping in. I, I have some, ex or some, I have some experience with this because I jumped into Warframe back uh, hmm. a year or two ago and got confronted with the exact same problem of like there is so much in a game and you basically just get put into it but then there was like the unlocks of collecting stuff and that whole process and it was very confusing and it sounds like they absolutely have this this problem right now of like there's a lot that you could do 
But how do you go and tell somebody how to unlock Izanagi's burden? <laughs> That's a new Honestly, person. Especially, I would, I especially now. To. Especially yeah, now. Especially I, now. I, I, I can't even tell to people to go to my YouTube channel to be like, yeah, it's right there. It's like, no, the, all the forges <laughs> changed. Like, I, I don't even know how it works. Exactly. Now. No idea. Like, there's all these problem, <laughs> like, questions now for a brand new player. If you're watching somebody who has the stuff, like, maybe the simplest is Recluse. Be like, well, you got to go to the comp playlist and do that and then win enough games. That's, like, the easiest one to get if you're a brand new player, maybe. But, like, outside of that, a lot of these are pretty complicated. Stuff also changes pretty frequently. Like, Bungie will bring out something and it's like, oh, this is actually really long and difficult to get. And then the next thing, they'll change it. And then I don't remember the change that they made. So when someone comes in five months later and they've changed everything, I'm like, I have no idea how you get yeah. that. I mean, but as content creators, are you guys kind of secretly happy that there is that? I mean, there's a lot no, of people. No, because now I got to go no. remake my old videos again. That's, yeah. that's probably <laughs> I can't just let them sit and accumulate views. Now I got to go back. <laughs> like, oh, Well, now I got to make a new account or something. Or I got to ask someone else who did it, how they did it. And okay. what, what I hope for work. Destiny 2 New Light is for it to be a really awesome onboarding process that gets more players playing Destiny on the regular. Right. Mm -hmm. That's that's for me as a player and as a content creator. Sure. Mm hmm. You think that the, you think that this is confusing enough that it's maybe turning some people away? For sure, for okay. sure. Oh, I I yeah. happened to pop into Seagull's uh, stream the other day. Literally, of course, within one minute of me loading it up, he starts talking about Destiny and how he basically just rage quit because he entered the game. I I don't know if this was exactly what I said verbatim, but it sounded like he entered the game and was just like overwhelmed and like didn't really have a handle on what to do and then he just he went back to apex hmm. or something like hmm. that i don't know i could shoot him a message but that's what it sounded like uh based on the very very quick listen in i had on his uh yeah we have a couple uh guests lined up in the f future that are going to be content creators or the, for other games that have now started to for the first time come over to destiny and are are in the destiny directory or they're in focus on it and are loving it and have had some of the experiences we're talking about so it's going to be interesting to kind of hear that group of people um say okay well how did you train make that transition from this community say like the division where mm -hmm. things are very right. different to hear and um i i i always felt that Something like what you're talking about, Briar, putting them into the beginning of a campaign. I understand that they want to get people in, but there should be an option that says, hey, I'm not new here. Just get me in yeah. or I'm yeah, new. Yeah, there should be a tutorial start, option. Start me. Start me. Give me the option to. Well, that's a good idea. Technically, forgo the, yeah. technically <laughs> there is a few of those things. I mean, like you get a quest that says, hey, reach 900. Right? Mm -hmm. Like the Cryptarch is Unlimited like. Unlimited power. Yeah, build your power. Like. They have these things in there. It's just we're aware of the interfaces. And anytime you play yeah. a new game, like the interface is usually the biggest struggle. And Destiny's gone through a lot of interface revamps. Well, you know, I think the interface itself is pretty confusing for a new player. Mm -hmm. Like the fact yeah. that bounties and quests are on the same page and you access that page by going to the map first for a lot of people is like, a, what? A, what? <laughs> yeah. You know, for PC players, we've probably all hotkeyed the quest page. No, but that's but for a lot idea. of players, it's not it's obvious it's for pursuits. Yeah, P. Easy. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's that's it's a, a tough a, problem to answer, honestly, for those guys. Like, going to see how I, I, they've got to be getting this feedback, and they've got to be working on it. It's going to be interesting to see how they. Adjust I'm, I'm sure they are. At this Absolutely. Point. Yeah. Does it, does anybody think they didn't know this was a problem? Like they pretty much made Destiny to year one with all the new additions free, and I think they're like, well. What are we supposed to do? Develop like a whole new front end of this? Like, don't you think they I, do? I I think that I mean like they they're the ones making the game. I'm sure they're familiar <laughs> yeah, with I'm sure. some of that. I think they probably just like, focused more on um trying to get people back in or like having their friends having people's friends come in and then having their friends kind of explain what's going on as opposed to them doing all the explaining right. because their objective was to get people to shadow keep level content as soon as possible as opposed right, to yeah. getting people yeah, I, to play exactly. stuff in the past yeah and and i just meant i i think it's time like i think over yeah. time they have a plan but they were like look building that cosmodrome mission thing is the best we can do for now you know 
<laughs> also, one thing about the the bounties and and stuff, I've noticed a lot of people like, why this person can hold like thirty bounties and I can only hold twenty six? What's up with that? It's because bounties and quests are linked together and cap out at sixty three. So confusing. that's why. Yep. So if you have a lot of quests that you're holding on to, you have like thirty seven quests. You're not going to be able to hold as many bounties to compare to someone who Complete only has them or dump them. fourteen. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah. So I definitely think they need to do something about that. Yeah, that's confusing. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I've been wondering why that's happening. I'm like, yeah, it says slots. I have no more room, and I'm looking at it going, I have plenty of room. I can. Yeah, yeah it over. goes back to what they did Golden with uh, Season of Opulence, where they gave you three pages of twenty one for sixty three total, and I guess they just did not uh, they adjust it. that. To, to like normalize they didn't build like, you can have 40 bounties and 40 quests mm -hmm. it's just 63 total so it, and 63 yeah, they, is also a very specific number if you didn't know 21 times 3 from a season ago yeah totally <laughs> they just adjusted the visuals they didn't change the the database right. that's right yeah. right because that's a whole lot of more work to change the entire database yeah then yeah. just be mm -hmm. like oh let's slap on a new ui yeah i will say yep. warframe has been having this problem from the get ever since it's expanded and i don't think destiny is going to get that much better when it comes to onboarding players. It comes down to players really having a drive to want to discover more. And mm. we're just in a, a state where like destiny is gotten complicated and you kind of have to get more knowledge and information from various places to, to be successful and like in having an exact pathway for certain things. You know? But even Warframe kind of puts you in a quest line. I guess you're in when you start Warframe right now, you you start in a story mode. Mm. It's like been it, a while since it moves since you from it. mission to mission. Well, it like it, it says it unlock the relays. It says unlock yeah. the relays, which is basically, you know, complete some of these and like level up your master rank. Right. It clearly shows you where you should go next. Mm, it's not clear. <laughs> <laughs> but it was clear to me. Like, there's definitely things that say it's been a what you do. couple of years since I did it. Yeah. Well, I think we agree Destiny is not clear right now. So at least we. Yeah, right. E either but way, it is, it's not. Yeah. It's got some work still ahead, but, you know, it's. it's I'm glad it's free. free. Hey, it's free. Yeah. Yeah, free. yeah exactly. It's, super it's great to see uh, new berries in the, in, the, in the tower. Yeah. And, I think uh, Paris uh, tweeted today that there's like 2.4 million people playing on Steam right now. I think that was Total like people who played. actually like logged in and played some amount of time or something. I don't know where this data I think that's how, from, how they usually track those. <laughs> but I don't know where it came from either, but I trust Paris. Where did this I come from? Oh, oh, I think it's uh, Charlemagne. Me, so Charlemagne I have no choice. <laughs> <It's probably laughs> so that's not yeah. official data, but it's trying it's, to scrape. It's, not official, it's got access but, to yeah. unique Steam players. Hmm. I, I, I think that's it's, what it's trying to do. I don't know. I think it's yeah. yeah. I don't know. The numbers are I, up, and it's great to see the these to be able to queue into events. And um, we didn't even get into chance. I mean, we got to talk about the changes to Crucible and a bunch of other stuff. Oh my god, yeah, we're way behind. Yeah, there's, there's the so new much. new hero nightmare hunts. There's the PvP changes. Iron Banner coming next week. Uh, the roadmap, etc. So, wow, Good there's point. a lot going on in Death. What do we right do now? next, Briar? Come on, put us on track. Uh, I'm sorry, I was reading a tweet. Uh, what are we talking about? Questions? <laughs> He's preparing for Q&A is what he meant to I'm, say. We're I'll be honest, I think some of that stuff is going to have to wait It's about that week. time. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Have to, yeah. Yeah. Watch, should we wait on the PvP stuff a little longer, you think, maybe? Probably. I hold? wanted to talk about it last week, but then we got stuck yeah. on a 20-minute conversation about a uh, world. I feel like I could sum it up real quick, <laughs> which is basically, it feels kind of the same. And then Power Ammo was bad, and then they nerfed it, and then how, now hopefully it's better. That's, also that's saying, my super hot take, super fast take on it. Well, it's also the Didn't fact that how hot they're fixing things, how quickly. Mm -hmm. and we're seeing yeah. a new Bungie, and it's really awesome. That was super exciting to see. They, just, they can like, just do what they want. It's great. We did yeah. a server side I mean, change. We're seeing the freedom. Yeah, we're seeing the freedom of a studio that doesn't have to answer to Activision, and they're be able to make changes that um, at a much faster rate. And to be honest with you, it's let's see how long awesome. that holds up before we start sucking. Let's see how long that holds up. I think it's fine to say your communication <laughs> is much better than it has been, and you're you're making changes quicker than you were. Yeah, because that's just a fact. Yeah, yeah. Also, and, being a couple a of changes. Really I quick. like that. Yeah. Is also fine. Let's hope it stays. Let's hope it continues. It does yeah. seem yeah. like they made yes. 
I actually was wondering if they made some tech changes because, right, they, they seemed like they did server side heavy ammo change. Like, is that really an organizational change or did they have to like put something in the code that sort of helped it? I would think the latter because why else wouldn't you just, you know, like, was it really a political change? Like, actually, let's go ahead and adjust heavy ammo with No, it seems five like a, a slower <laughs> switch over to putting more things server side so those changes exactly. can be made quicker. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it seems like that's what, if true, I'm excited that they are in a position to do those things. Like, who knows? Maybe they can do stuff in the raid. Like, maybe that second encounter down there. You know what? We've, maybe. Uh, we made but the I'm not going to base... Or whatever it is. Like, I'm not going to... They made a couple of changes really quick, but they've done that in the past, and then they've we've asked for yeah, a change that's taken months and months. Well, there are a lot of people are scratching their head right now wondering they're making these changes so quickly based on player feedback. There's been what seems to be overwhelming player feedback on One-Eyed Mask and Reckless, and there's been no changes to that. I so think that's a good, good thing to add to this conversation. I think some of the conversation, while it's the communication's great, it's also been very hit or miss or what they choose to focus on, and 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 that's, that's yeah. sort of some confusion there. Yeah. This is why Dev Talk is super fun and super dope. Yep. Twitter questions! Yay! <laughs> Uh, do you guys want to do some Twitter questions? I, I mean, we're, I, we're already at yeah, we're, we're at two, two hours. Two hours. Yeah, you yeah. get to pick one, like, Briar. Two or three. <laughs> one question. <laughs> it's the final Twitter question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Briar, I tell you what. Why you look? I'm gonna finish the, just the roadmap that's coming up on 10:15. We have Iron Banner and the Legend Nightmare Hunts. We Very have 10:22 with the Exotic Quest Leviathan Breath. We have Master Nightmare Hunts as well coming on October 22nd. On 10:29 is the Festival of Lost as well as the Dungeon Launch as well as a PvP mode Momentum Control. Uh, and Festival of Lost goes all through November 19th as well. We get a new Exotic quest again on the 29th which is the xenophage and then the first raid challenge launches november 5th finally on november 19th is the guys next final i sincerely sincerely hope that one of the raid challenges is don't build a single piece of land i will be so happy <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I need to check the names oh, i need to check the names of the mind. of the challenges because they actually have like two challenges technically oh, the like in the in the raid like there's there's challenges um for each encounter that they actually describe out and then they have like their their bounty challenges as well which i thought was interesting because i remember i don't remember what the actual challenges were but i just remember them just being kind of interesting actually mm -hmm. as opposed to a lot of the other raid challenges in the bounty forms which are just kind of like arbitrary random things that they thought of after the fact so it's I thought that gonna was neat. Don't touch the milk. Ooh, that and would be rough. And then gonna be like, Phew, I don't even know if that would build. be possible in some of them because <laughs> some of the portals so, spawn so far out that you might not be able to jump yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I was just trying to buy Briar a little time, but <laughs> I personally really <laughs> hope that it's you have to build all the platforms back just so I can see Tefty be like, God. I just won't <laughs> do that one. <laughs> <laughs> Good pass. I'll be like, that rate challenge pass. is a no go. I'll pass. <laughs> uh, so, the question I'm going to ask, because I only okay. get one tonight, is from Hero of Time 39. Okay. Who asks, if you're haunted by Eris, by fire team members, who would be more insufferable? The oh dream gosh. team or math class? <laughs> so, you're being haunted by the dream team. Or by math class. It depends on who in math class. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, Dream Team specific. Nano? There's a lot of people in math if class. If it's nano, if it's like nano, outhouse, and Bud Light, it's definitely math class. <laughs> 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 At least that particular combo. That's a. I feel like this is easy. Is one team is going to be constantly criticizing how you go about your daily life and telling right. you the optimal way to proceed, and the other one is going to be constantly making you laugh. Mm. That's right. You would not be able to. You would be in very serious moments in your life where you need to be stoic and and respond and to a situation. And they're gonna be they're gonna be making you crack up and laugh and true. You know. That's true. Hey, see, also, how much could again, I it depends on who from math, class. math class members telling me exactly how to optimally DPS this meeting. But if you, you if you take but, my raid team, then yes. If you take other people, then definitely no. But here's the thing: <laughs> so, you could also flip it, you know, to where if you are getting the feedback from the math class, 
you could then obviously do things Ooh. incorrectly to try to trigger them from all the, the stuff, you know? So it might be a You're game. You're trolling your ghosts? Yeah, you control your ghosts, essentially, you know? Yeah. Okay. Have you seen how freaking in shape Mr. Fruit is right now? Mm-hmm. I want him to haunt me and teach me how to bead like that. Work out. <laughs> a trainer. All right, now we need a new your... definition of haunt. Is it a companion <laughs> or are you being tormented? Oh, it's like Casper He's tormenting me here. by telling me to go work out. Get off my yeah. ass and go back. Yeah, he's your personal oh, motivator. Like motivation. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Squats, motherfucker. Squats. Hovering <laughs> over you. Like, skip up, down. Down. Eating. up, down. <laughs> yeah. All right. Should we call fun. it a day? Is that the show? It's a good show. show. All right. We could go for another two show. hours easy. Yeah. There is honestly Not another either. hour or two of content. Yeah, there was a lot. It's crazy. There's a lot this Coming week, and it's week. great. I personally love it when there's so much to talk about that we can't actually get through all yeah. of it in a show so because much. Destiny, in my opinion, is in such a good spot right now. I'm just mm -hmm. thrilled at where things have been going, and I'm, I'm excited to make builds and all that. It's great. It's a great time right now. Yeah. Uh, Datto, where can people find you, man? On the internet. Awesome. <laughs> no, I will actually uh, YouTube.com slash Dow Does Destiny. We're getting close to a million subs. Nice. Please stop to me. Yes. Congratulations, man. Do it. Take the time. Congratulations. Thank you. Hey, do you have a Twitter and all that? Do you say Twitter? No, he, he has. doesn't like he does the the Twitter, Twitter, Dow Does Destiny, Twitch. Do you have a Snapchat? Just, uh, no. <laughs> Is it a premium I've, Snapchat? I've Is that never why we used find Snapchat. the risky cosplay? Yeah, you got a Patreon? Oh not yet <laughs> oh, but i am doing a bunny girl for halloween so that'll probably Damn. be pretty risky oh sweet awesome mm -hmm. um briar <laughs> uh yeah uh i'm briar rabbit you can find me on uh farm singles just look up for briar rabbit <laughs> i'd be uh glad there. To, you uh, like the rabbit patches yeah mm -hmm. man make some carrots together yeah is that a metaphor <laughs> <laughs> Uh, me, me, hello. Uh, I am Miss Five Thousand Watts. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. Just look for Miss Five Thousand Watts. Fran, I am Fran or FM Three underscore right here on Twitch. That's one of the best ways to support me is just right here on Twitch at FM Three underscore. Cool. I'll go next since I know. And, okay, good. No, I'll go next because I know Pope <laughs> has things he wants to say. He wants to do like podcast. You know, yeah. outro stuff and all that. And like, I have yeah, been doing bro. that in the end of the shows. But you know what? Since Pope's here, I'm going to let him do that because I, I can see it in his Aww. face. He wants it right I now, you know? No, I, I so, I'll take it. So, I'll take it. if you want to find more of me, you can talk to me at Teft on Twitter. You can catch my streams twitch.tv forward slash Teft to Teft. And uh, thanks for watching, Pope. And this has been Pope Perry. Clear the comms. We're out. Comms clear. Out. Comms clear. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Briar did. <laughs> if um, don't follow me on Twitter because you should actually be following the at DCP underscore live Twitter account and Instagram. That is where we inform you guys about what's going on on this show um, and all the things that we're doing. You could uh, get a chance to get invited to what the raid race that we just had. We're going to be doing another raid race coming up during the next race. We're excited. We're already planning that. Pope, do you have a lot of the, the next raid? Uh, no. I bet it happens in December. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it's Christmas themed. I bet there's a Santa. <laughs> Mechanical demon the North Santa. Pole. Santa <laughs> mechanics. <laughs> I like that plan. Right. Wait, can, wait so, does the raid take place on? A, anyway, okay. See what you've done, Pope. You guys are ruining my outro. No, I'm sorry. Mission Follow us on Instagram, Instagram and Twitter. We're making it better. You're, yeah. you're actually making it better. <laughs> So I guess I, I'm really excited about next show. Um, the 17th, we have the voice of Eris. Morla is awesome. going to be on our show. Oh, I know um, we're really excited to have her on and been waiting for the right time to bring her on. We have an um, Houndish coming on on the 24th. And to wrap up the month, we have Miss Noodle. So we have a lot of stuff happening this month. Make sure to follow us on our social media. And at this time, I want to say extremely huge thank you to our Twitch, our YouTube, and uh, our Patreon sponsors. All you guys make this possible. You support us. You allow us to put together things like the Raid Race and um, attending PAX and all the special events that we do. Just yeah. a sincere thank you. I hope you guys are enjoying uh, Pope's Nudes because he uh, <laughs> he does that yes. every week for us. So, so if you're a yeah. Patreon well, member. Thanks for sending you... those out, Tefty. 
Yeah. Well, he sends them to me, and I'm like, yes, yes, no, yes, no. no. You're not supposed curate, to send them to anybody. I, I curate the news. It's called uh, Pope's Creamy Calendar. Yeah, and then I, wow. check for I it send them out. <laughs> you have to be a member. A subscri- you can for a dollar. You can get <laughs> for access. For a dollar. Yeah. For a dollow It's, it's actually a pretty, kind of really yeah. cool. We don't talk about it, but um, when you're a member okay. of Patreon or a sponsor of uh, Saw on Twitch, you get access to our Discord, and you get to listen in on our pre-show listen-ins before we get into and go live. There's a lot of other perks, so make sure. Where to all take the a look mega serious that. planning happens. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mega serious. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right. Is that the show? Well done. I think that's it, right? I think. Yeah. Episode number one fifty-seven. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Thanks again, Daddle, for joining us. We'll see you next week for another exciting episode of Destiny Universe Expansion Awesomeness. <laughs> All those things. Catch you next week on Destiny Ballsy. Guardians out. (laughs) Guardians. (laughs)